to put runners at first and third. Then George Foster belted a deep drive to left field for a three-run home run and a New York Mets four to nothing lead. George was four for five in the ball game last night and drove in four runs. Then after Strawberry had singled and Hubie Brooks was walked, Danny Heap doubled the left to drive in Strawberry, and it was five to nothing New York. Jose Cruz making a valiant attempt on the ball, but it went for an RBI double. That put runners at second and third. And then Junior Ortiz was up and singled to right to drive in both Brooks and Heap, and it was seven to nothing New York still in the third inning. George Foster added an RBI double in the sixth inning, and the final was eight to one, as Walt Terrell retired the first ten in a row with defensive help from Jose Okendo in the second inning, first on this ball by Jerry Mumphrey, and then on a hard smash by Ray Knight, as Jose dove for it, got up, and made the play. Tonight, the Mets go for three in a row with 19-year-old Dwight Gooden on the mound, making his major league debut. Dome in Houston, Texas. It's New York Mets baseball. Tonight, the New York Mets take on the Houston Astros. Participating advertisers are Bud Light. The best has a taste all its own, satisfying but never filling. So ask for Bud Light. Manufacturers hand over trust, where our facts make your money worth more. Datsun, Nissan builders of high quality cars and trucks for 50 years. Available at your Datsun dealer. By Exxon and its thousands of independent dealers. By express mail service from the post office, we deliver excellently for less. And by ivory, the soap without a lot of extra ingredients. For pure, natural kind of clean, lather up with ivory. Pitching for the New York Mets is Dwight Gooden with a record of 0-0 and 3.00 in the ERA average for spring trading. And pitching for Houston is Bob Nepper with a record in spring trading of three wins and one loss, an earned run average of 3-1-2. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Ralph Kiner, along with Tim McCarver and Steve Sabrisky, and a special night here tonight. A few years back, there was a great picture called A Star is Born, and the Mets are hoping here tonight that Dwight Gooden will be a star here in his first appearance in a Major League uniform. Last year, he won 19 and lost only four while pitching in Class A ball. He is trying to make an awfully big jump. So a special event here tonight inside at the Astrodome. Now let's go down to Tim McCarver and his special guest. All right, Ralph Kiner, thank you very much. One of the nice things about this business is often you have a chance to interview nice people. I am standing with Mr. and Mrs. Dan Gooden, Ella and Dan Gooden, and I'm so very happy that you had a chance to come to Houston tonight. Yes, I'm very happy to be here, too. And it was your first plane ride, right, Dan? No, not mine. Not yours, but not yours. My first, my first. <laughs> and you enjoyed it, I assume. I did. I uh, really did. Especially when the purpose was to come see your baby pitch tonight. That's right. <laughs> And, and, of course, uh, Dan, can you, can you tell me if at any time in Dwight's young career that you thought he would make the major leagues this soon? No, no I never did. Not this soon. I was hoping he would make it, but I didn't, I didn't make it this quick. And if he wins tonight, he'll be your son. If he loses, he'll be Ella's, right? <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> uh, we, he's mine no matter what. <laughs> he's a win, lose, or draw. He's mine. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. When the Mets signed Dwight Gooden, Frank Cashin said that he was going to be his, and we're so happy that Dan and Ella Gooden could make it here tonight. And thank you. Enjoy the ball game, and we're naturally hoping that we come out a winner. I hope so. Yes, I hope we do. Thank you very much, Dan and Ella Gooden, Ralph. Okay, and... Houston now taking the field. We're getting set for this ball game to start. Ray Knight will be at first base. At second base is Bill Duran. 
Dickie Thon playing shortstop. Denny Walling at third base. Out in left field, Jose Cruz. Jerry Mumphrey in center field. And Terry Poole in right. The catcher is Alan Ashby. And on the mound, Bob Nepper. Nepper with a record last year of six and seven. In spring training, he was three and one. And Nepper, I should say, had a record of six and 13 with a 3.19 ERA. And he got off to a horrible start last year. He was one and eight before he finally got untracked and he started his winning ways against the New York Mets here in the Astrodome. Well, against the Mets tonight, Davey Johnson will be sending Ron Gardenhire at second base and leading off. Jose Okendo had a superb game last night, will bat second. Keith Hernandez, one for 13 on the young year, will bat third and play first. George Foster, a booming George Foster evening last night with four hits and a three run home run. He'll bat cleanup. Darrell Strawberry in right field batting fifth. Mookie Wilson back in the lineup. Uh, the first game Mookie's played since opening day in Cincinnati, that day on Monday, of course. Hubie Brooks batting seventh and playing third. Mike Fitzgerald getting his first start of the year behind the plate. And, of course, the much heralded Dwight Gooden on the mound. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Mets baseball and WRTV and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audiences. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the New York Mets and WRTV is prohibited. And now Ron Gardenhire stepping into the batter's box. Ron hitting 422. He's had one home run. And that was his average in spring training. He takes the first pitch from Bob Nipper, and it's strike one. Gardenhire last year batted 063 for the Mets in 17 ball games and 287 for Tidewater in Triple A baseball. And Nipper throws up a high fastball. It's lined right at Dickie Thon and a hard out. I'll tell you what Bob Nepper will try to do with the right handed hitters tonight he'll try to get ahead with fastballs and breaking balls away and when he gets two strikes he loves to run that fastball in on their fist he tried that on Ron Gardenhire and Ronnie hit it solidly but a nice play by Dickie Thon and it brings up Jose Okendo who was three for five last night Okendo with an average spring Nepper with his first pitch a fastball it's lined in the center field for the first hit of the game. So Jose Okendo picks up his fourth hit in the second game of this three game series and it brings up Keith Hernandez. Ralph I was talking to Okendo before the game and Joe told me that he had moved up on the plate because of having problems with the outside pitch and hitting instructor Bill Robinson had suggested that and Joey said that's the way he's approaching it so he's moved back uh, on the plate and moved up and uh, the results the last two days have been excellent certainly have been excellent. Okendo batting 375 so far this year before that base hit and Keith Hernandez takes a pitch for ball one Hernandez 0 for 5 last night and so far this year he's had only one hit in 13 at bats. Okendo good speed the runner at first base as we get underway here in the Astrodome. Throw over to first base, Okendo back. Outside, it's about 60 degrees, the wind blowing around 30 to 40 knots. But here inside, a perfect evening. And that one just does catch the inside corner. Hernandez doesn't agree with the call by home plate umpire Joe West. On deck batter, George Foster. One ball, one strike to count. Oh, Kendall running with the pitch, and the ball is fouled off. So, oh, Kendall in motion last night. The Mets executed two hit and run plays perfectly. Yeah, Jose Okendo on the back end of it uh, as the hitter last night. Two line drives to right field with Wally Backman on first. And now, of course, the count one and two, they won't be doing it again unless the count goes to three, two. But it's a good time to do it, even though you have a left-hander against the left-hander. Hernandez handling left-handers very, very well. Bobby Valentine, the third base coach, and Hernandez has struck out. So Keith having a tough time getting off on this season. Struck out twice in last night's ball game. And as you very well know, Ralph Kiner, when you're going bad, as Keith is too early really to go bad, being only the fourth ball game. 
But the alarming thing, early alarm right now, is that Keith has struck out six times. And when you're going bad, pitchers are more inclined to make pitches like that on, on you, aren't they? They certainly are, and that's one of the reasons why you go bad. They mm -hmm. make very good pitches on you, and you also are a little bit mixed up in your thinking at the plate. Uh, to where you can't hit the real uh, hanger where you usually hammer that pitch. And now a man who hammered four of them yesterday, George Foster, four for five with a home run and two doubles and a single. Throw to first base, and again, Okendo back. Nepper does not have a good move to first base. A lot of left-handers will give you the bad move and then a good move after that. But Nepper has moved over twice with about as good a move as he possesses. Okendo, one of the bad things about diving into a bag, you can jam your finger, and Okendo seemed to jam his little finger on his right hand then. And Foster with a half swing, and it's a strike. Foster, if you'll notice, is using a white bat. For years and years, he used a bat that was black. He called it his black beauty. Last night, he switched to a white back and went four for five. The bat belonging to Keith Hernandez. One of the things about that bat, it is a lighter one than he had been using, and they've been trying to get him to go to a lighter bat for quite some time. Right, that's a white bat, right? Right. Much lighter. Much lighter. <laughs> In color, the ball bounces away. Okendo going for second base. And he's called out. The call by second base umpire, Frank Pulley, it appeared that Okendo had beaten the tag. Let's Gu take a look. Guarantee it looked like he was coming up. But regardless of whether he was safe or out, give Alan Ashby a lot of credit. Looked like he was coming up. We'll see. You be the umpire. Safe? I don't believe it. He was safe. He was safe in my book, but not in the book of the umpire. <laughs> so no runs, one hit, and no one left on base. Score at the end of one half inning. The Mets nothing and Houston coming up. Now here's a word from Bud Light. While the Mets have taken the field, it'll be Keith Hernandez at first base for the Mets. Keith, of course, the Golden Glove first baseman. At second base, Ron Gardenhire. At shortstop, Jose Okendo, the third baseman, Hubie Brooks. Out on left field, George Foster. In center field, Mookie Wilson. And in right field, it is Daryl Strawberry. The catcher, Mike Fitzgerald. And on the mound, it is Dwight Gooden. The spring training record 0-0 with a 3 ERA. Last year, Lynchburg, he won 19 and lost four. Struck out 300 batters. And he did pitch in the playoffs at Tidewater. He won two and lost one as Tidewater won the overall playoffs. Dwight Gooden's first major league lineup that he'll be opposed by Bill Dorn, the second baseman leading off, followed by Terry Poole, the right fielder. Dickie Thon hitting third, followed by Jose Cruz, the left fielder. Jerry Mumphrey, the center fielder, batting fifth. Ray Knight, the first baseman, hitting sixth, followed by Dennis Walling, Alan Ashby, and Bob Nepper. And the first pitch in his major league career by Dwight Gooden, a ball. Bill Dorn in spring training batted 222 with no home runs and one RBI, and one for four last night. Fine young, young second baseman for the Houston Astros. Batted 271 last year. And Goodman, Gooden's first fast strike, and it's a fastball grounded out to second base. So Dwight Gooden retires his first major league batter. Yeah, there's no way. Bill Doran now is a second year man, and there's no way, if I'm a left handed hitter, that I can't see a strike off Dwight Gooden. I mean, it's his first major league start. He's got to be nervous. It's human. And for Houston ball, uh, for the hitters to go up there and hack at the second pitch without seeing a strike, I think is foolish. And a 268 hitter in spring training, Terry Poole steps in. Poole won for four last night. Good hitter against the Mets. And the fastball for a strike. Poole hit 326 against the Mets throughout his career. So far this year, he's hitting 333. And again, the fastball and strike two. Dwight Gooden, the ninth teenager to play for the New York Mets and the third youngest pitcher the Mets have ever had. Jim Bethke was 18, the youngest, then Jerry Hensley, and now Dwight Gooden. Dwight is the youngest player in the National League, 19 years of age. 
good live fastball there, and that's one and two as he misses the strike zone. And the Mets also have the youngest non-pitcher in the National League on the field, that in the person of Jose Okendo, who's only 20. It's short. Did he swing? Home plate umpire said no. It's Joe West behind the plate, and the count at two and two. See Mike Fitzgerald there behind the plate. He caught Dwight Gooden in three games in which Gooden pitched last year for the Tidewater Ball Club. Fastball again grounded to the second base side. Gardenhire has it and two men away. Gardenhire playing second base with a left handed pitcher pitching. Wally Backman generally plays second base with a right hander pitching. And it brings up Dickie Thon. Thon the spring hit 260, drove in eight runs. One for four yesterday and batting 417 for the year. And the first curveball. It's called a strike. So Gooden comes in with the curveball and gets a strike. And Dwight's parents watching, intently watching. Dan and Ella Gooden from Tampa, Florida, flown in at the Mets expense tonight. Nice gesture. And a good fastball in a good location. It's strike two. Talking to Dwight Gooden in the lobby of the hotel before the ball game, he did not appear nervous. Another curveball, this one misses. I saw him on the bench before the game, before he went down to stretch, and hey, he's a little scary along those lines. He doesn't uh, he doesn't appear to get that nervous too often. Fastball struck him out. So Dwight Gooden gets his first major league strikeout. He had 300 of them last year at Lynchburg. It's a one two three inning and the score at the end of one the Mets nothing and Houston nothing. Now here's a word from manufacturers handover. No score we're going to the top of the second and George Foster the lead off. If you recall he was at the plate when Okendo was called out attempting to move on down to second base and the pitch that got away from the catcher. So a new cat for George Foster and he pulls the ball foul for strike one. Tell you, Ralph, some glowing reports from the Houston players in this morning's Houston Chronicle about the game last night. I thought it was uh, some of those players were uh, were well spoken when they were talking about the new Met look. They said it, uh, the ball club appeared to be a more aggressive club this year, and I think they're right. No doubt about it. The young ball players fighting for positions and playing a very exciting brand of baseball. Nepper back and picking up a swinging strike for strike two. And they couldn't have a feistier guy at the helm either in Davey Johnson. Nepper with a lifetime record of 67 victories and 83 losses. His record is not indicative of his talent. He's a pretty good pitcher. And right there you see Daryl Strawberry, the on deck batter. Misses with a breaking ball in the count one and two. That's that slider he was working on last year. He added to that when he got off to that horrendous start that you mentioned earlier, one and eight by June 1st. He will kind of cut his fastball. He loves to come inside with the heat on this situation, but they're going to go away, I see. Turned it over a little mm -hmm. bit. Took something off, reacting a little bit like a screwball. And the count at two and two. Mookie Wilson will be hitting behind. George Foster you look at Davy Johnson peeking around the corner. This one popped up it's up there but playable Jose Cruz the left fielder. So Foster way out in front hits a high towering fly ball to left one away here in the top of the second no score and it brings up Daryl Strawberry. Strawberry a fine spring as you see 354 with two home runs one for five last night. And the first pitch of ball. Strawberry hitting 250 so far this year with one home run. He got that home run his first time up in this 1984 season. This one hit deep to center field, but high going back to center field. Mumphrey, it might be gone. It is gone. Goodbye. Darrell Strawberry with a towering home run over the 406 mark. That is some power. 
I'll tell you one thing, Ralph Kiner. I don't think I've seen three balls hit over the center field fence in this ballpark. A fastball on the outside part of the plate allowed Strawberry to extend those arms. Watch this power. Boom. And I, like you, thought that that ball was going to be a routine out, and that's the difference between a guy as strong as Strawberry popping that ball. I'm telling you. I'll tell you, that's the difference Ooh. between a great home run hitter and a fellow who just hits a few. That's right. And now Mookie Wilson grounding his first pitch. It's foul. A lot of power in that swing right there, folks. I think Daryl might have been the only guy who thought the ball had a chance because he's the one who thumped it. <laughs> well, Daryl's the type of hitter that when the ball goes in the Ooh. air, it keeps on carrying. Not many like that. Jimmy Fox would be one that I can recall in a hurry. One of the greatest home run hitters of all time. Mookie hit 276 last year. And he takes a ball. One ball, one strike. So Daryl Strawberry, after having a tough night last night, coming back with a home run here tonight. And Mookie checks on the swing, and he does check as first base umpire Doug Harvey said, no swing. That, by the way, the first home run that Daryl Strawberry has hit in the Astrodome, that leaves him only Dodger Stadium. Ground ball right back to Bob Nepper. And Nepper over to first base for the out. He has homered in every National League park but Dodger Stadium. Of course, he probably did his poorest against the Dodgers last year. In his hometown. Mm -hmm. And there probably is a good reason for that. All those fans out there are looking on, and he's trying too hard. Here's Hubie Brooks. Hubie won for three last night, batted 391 this spring with some power. And he takes a fastball. Last year, Hubie batted 251 with five home runs. Mets leading one nothing on Strawberry's home run. And this one a high fly ball to left center Jerry Mumphrey the center fielder making the call and making the catch and that retires the side. So the home run. Oh, no one left on base and the score at the end of one and a half innings the Mets won Houston nothing. Now here's a word from Bud Light. Well, Daryl Strawberry putting the Mets on top of the home run, an Academy Award home run. This one really hit a towering fly ball to deep center, drifting back to center fielder Jerry Mumphrey, and no chance to get it as it goes over at the 406 mark. You know, all this week, as we look at the swing again of Daryl Strawberry, what power. All this week, every movie on Channel 9 is an Academy Award winner. Tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock, Kurt Douglas with Sir Lawrence Olivier and Gene Simmons star in Spartacus here on Channel 9 as we salute Oscar and saluting Tim McCarver as he comes in for the play by play. All right, Ralph Kiner, thank you very much. Jose Cruz leading it off for the Astros here in the second inning takes a fastball high from Dwight Gooden, who has a one run cushion here in the second. Daryl Strawberry with his second home run of the year. What's the old cliche? No parks too big for Strawberry, even Yellowstone. <laughs> <laughs> Strawberry feels forever. Swing and a miss at another high fastball, one and one. Should say Strawberry hits forever, mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> it's amazing how much Dwight Gooden and Strawberry look like. Tap to the left side. Okendo in. High throw, but he got him. Okendo not in a position to make a strong throw just in time to get Cruz. You caught our old man. You saw two great plays by Okendo in last night's ball game. This play a little bit difficult because he didn't get into throwing position on the bounce, but he got it over there in time. And Jose Cruz, who does get down the line in a hurry, is out. Jose Okendo. Another guy who gets down the line in a hurry, Jerry Mumphrey hitting from the left side, normally a switch hitter. Fastball is high. These guys are up there ready to swing at the first pitch, and I don't understand that, Ralph Kiner. They realize that young Dwight Gooden in his first major league start has got to be a bit nervous out there. Boy. Good curveball there, one and one. Right off the table. 19 years of age. 
Gooden features a fastball and various types of breaking ball, primarily a good downer. Fastball by Mumphrey, one and two. Well, after throwing that good curveball and then coming back with a fastball, Mumphrey way behind the pitch. When you see that good curveball and they can get it over, you have to wait a little longer and it makes that fastball that much harder to hit. Another curveball tapped foul. Yeah, especially if you throw that breaking ball over behind in the count, you don't see a lot of young pitchers with the poise and the confidence enough to do it. But Davey Johnson, of course, you got to be a talent. You can be well poised. There are a lot of clerks that have <laughs> poise. <laughs> but you got to have talent to pitch number one. But Davey certainly loves the poise and confidence of young Dwight Gooden from Tampa, Florida. Fastball is low, two and two to Jerry Mumphrey. Gooden likes to be called Doc. Goes back to his basketball playing days. Doc or Doctor? Of course, there's only one doctor in basketball, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Julia Serving, of course. Curveball gets Mumphrey. Two two curveball. And the second strikeout for Dwight Gooden. Five in a row retired now by Dwight. Oh, this one drops right off the table. And this curveball as good as you'll see in the major leagues. Bob Feller, known for a fastball, had one of the greatest curveballs that anyone ever had in Major League Baseball. Bob Feller pitched the only opening day no hitter back in 1940, a year before I was born, and that's the truth. Here's Ray Knight breaking ball inside. The truth? You mean you were bro born? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and not had. Not had. <laughs> 1-0 to Ray Knight, batting 273 on the young season. Good fastball. Speaking of no-hitters, a no-hitter pitch today. It tied the earliest date for a no-hitter ever pitch. Ken Force did it for Houston here back a few years back on April 7th. Fastball ripped foul into the Astro right in front of their dugout. It's 1-2 and two to Ray Knight. Of Jack. course, you're speaking chronologically, of course. Yes. Not the earliest time during a season as Bob Feller holds that. Bob Feller is the only man to pitch a no hitter on opening day but yep. it was later in the month. Jack Morris the man that did it for Detroit against the White Sox. Swing and a miss he gets Ray Knight third strikeout for Dwight Gooden as he has retired six straight Astros and the Mets lead one to nothing after two and the fastball this time in a good spot and it's right on by Ray Knight he was behind it a speedy fastball now a word from a speedy Dotson. Mike Fitzgerald leads it off for the Mets here in the top of the third inning. The Mets lead 1-0. Fastball from Bob Nepper misses outside 1-0 to Fitzgerald in his first at-bat in the 84 season. His first at-bat in the major leagues, he hit a home run. Mm-hmm. And against the Phillies and Charlie Hudson last year at the Vet in Philadelphia. Fastball is outside, 2-0. There you see the two stars of the Mets. They certainly look alike. Certainly had a lot to say about this game so far, Gooden has retired six in a row, and Strawberry, with his home run, knock, knocking in the only run. Base hit up the middle for Fitzgerald. So Mike Fitzgerald on there. Mike did not have a good spring as far as his hitting was concerned. And Dwight Gooden, not only is this his first game, this may be his first professional at bat. Probably is. High school, they use the DH in most of the places that they play baseball. Let's see what kind of a swinger he is. He's a good athlete, so he might be a good hitter. As you mentioned, an outstanding basketball player in high school. Probably up there bunting, and he is. And bunted it hard. Foul down toward the third base coaching box, retrieved by Bobby Valentine. This Stan might be the first time he's played on AstroTurf, too. Uh-huh. And of also work. inside. Yeah. You can bet on that now. <laughs> All of them. As a matter of fact, I think that he told me that he has played on AstroTurf before. He is uh, he has played on it in the minor leagues. I think uh, one of his uh, in the in the league in which his team last year, the Lynchburg Mets, were in. I think one one park had AstroTurf in it. Mike Fitzgerald talking to Bill Robinson to see if anything's on. Oh, and one to Gooden. Throw back to first. 
good way to keep that runner close and not allow the runner, a good base runner, to steal second base if the first baseman breaks too soon. And Gooden swinging with the charging Ray Knight, also in tight, Denny Walling, the third baseman. Well, having him swing away there would indicate that Dave Johnson thinks he's a good hitter. Mm -hmm. This was not a missed sign. No, a pretty good cut, as a matter of fact. A little behind it, but pretty good swing. 0 oh and 2 to Gooden. Breaking ball high. 1 and 2 to Dwight. Bob Nepper, 6 and 7 lifetime against the Mets. He was 1 and 0 in 1983, shutting out the Mets. July 15th of last year. Breaking ball, nicely fielded by Walling. Over to first. It's a double play. A nicely turned double play around the horn. 5 4 3. And this ball hit hard. Walling has to make a fine backhand play. He makes the turnaround pivot. And Gooden hustling down the line at first makes it close. But he is called out. It's a double play. Not too bad. As he hits into a double play, well, that's not too good, but it was hit well. Yeah, the results weren't good, but it certainly was a good start. Dwight hit that well, and only a fine fielding play by Denny Walling. Was responsible for turning a double play. Here's Ron Gardenhire, who lined out to short his first time up. Takes a fastball strike. 0 1 to Ronnie. Ron one for seven playing second base tonight for the first time this year in a starting role. He has played second but only for defensive purposes. Relieving Wally Backman. There's a curveball strike. 0 and 2 to Ron Gardenhire. Breaking ball just misses outside. The umpires by the way Joe West behind the plate. Doug Harvey at first base, Frank Pulley, Easton's own Frank Pulley at second base, and Jerry Crawford at third. Fastball just misses. Did he go? No, says first base umpire Doug Harvey. And the count's 2 2 to Ron Gardenhire. Breaking ball gets Gardenhire. First strikeout. I beg your pardon, second strikeout for Bob Nepper. And the Mets are down without a run in the third inning. They did have one hit and stranded none. After two and a half, it's the Mets one and the Astros nothing. The first game ever played at Chase Stadium was on April 17, 1964. And 49,000 fans were on hand that day. This year, 20 years to the day, on Tuesday afternoon, April 17th, the 1984 home season opens against the Montreal Expos. Game time 1.30, and the pageantry and ceremonies get underway at 1 o'clock. Don't forget, it's also the first day of calendar week, and all fans who attend the game will receive the full-color calendar courtesy of the Mets and Getty Oil. The wall calendar contains photos of your favorite Mets, as well as the schedule and interesting historical information about the ball club. So plan to be on hand for the home opener Tuesday afternoon, April 17th at Shea, the Mets and the Expos at 1.30. You can buy tickets at the advanced ticket window at Shea through Ticketron or Teletron or call 212-507-TIXX. And please call Monday through Friday during business hours 9 through 5. And the Honorable Mayor Edward Koch will throw out the first ball when the Mets open their home season on that Tuesday, April 17th against Montreal. Game time at 1.30 p.m. And it will be exactly 20 years to the day that Shea was opened. And the Mets will recreate the first pitch ever at Shea. Coming back for the occasion will be Mets battery, the pitcher Jack Fisher, and the catcher Jesse Gonder. And the leadoff man in that game, a Pittsburgh Pirate man by the name of Dick Schofield. And the umpire will be Tom Gorman. All what right, a day Ralph. That was. Yes, sir. Dick Schofield's son is now the shortstop in the California Angels chain and may see some action this year with the curtailed play of Rick Burleson who is now undergoing more problems with that torn rotator cuff. Here's Denny Walling to lead it off. The Mets lead one nothing. Gooden has retired six in a row. Fastball is high one and oh.
Denny Walling betting 222. He's two for nine in the young season. Fouls back a fastball. One and one to Denny Walling. On deck, the fine catcher of the Astros, Alan Ashby. Walling signed as a free agent for the Houston Astros. Like he took something off of that pitch, two and one to Denny Walling. During the spring, Gooden had some trouble with the fingernail on his pitching hand. Another fastball. Did he go? No, sir. Three and one to Walling. Yeah, he tore that skin away from the nail on his right forefinger. That caused him to be lifted from the game, but that appears to be healed right now, of course. Well, he walks him. So the first base runner of the ball game, the first walk allowed by Dwight Gooden. And the batter's going to be Alan Ashby, the fine catcher of the Astros. Batted only 229 in an injury plague year last year. But he did bounce back to hit 356 this spring, as you saw on our screen there. He's got a lifetime average against the Mets at 305. Walling, not a threat to run at first base. Fastball is low to Alan Ashby. Ashby had eight home runs last year. His high, career high, was 12 two years ago. A dramatic home run against the Dodgers back in 81. Throw to first base. Walling's back. That was, of course, the strike season, and those were the divisional playoffs. The Dodgers won those, of course. Breaking ball outside, 2 0 oh to Alan Ashby. So Dwight Gooden, after retiring the first six in a row, having a bit of a problem with his control here. 19 years old, November 16th. Fastball, foul ball. Two and one to Alan Ashby. The youngest pitcher to ever pitch in the major leagues was Joe Nuxall, who was 15 years of age. He had one start during the war. That was WW2. And then went down to the minor leagues. Wasn't WW1, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> Nuxie now a radio broadcaster along with Marty Brenneman. We just left Joe Nuxall, the old left hander. In Cincinnati, swing and a miss. Two and two to Alan Ashby. And Ashby helped him out there. That ball definitely out of the strike zone. It's up too high for a strike, but the volume of the ball just too much for Ashby on that pitch. Yeah, you don't have much of a chance to think about it. Hitting is an extraordinarily difficult art. If you do it three out of ten times successfully, then you're a good one. There goes Walling, breaking ball. And Walling has himself a stolen base. Breaking ball was outside to run the count to three and two, but Denny Walling, a nifty piece of base running. This could have been a strike. I don't know if it was outside. It might have been, but the throw on down by Fitzgerald, the catcher, way high and offline and not in time. So Walling gets a stolen base. So much for that. He wasn't a threat to one. <laughs> I guess everybody's a threat, just like everybody's dangerous with a bat in their hands. And Ashby fouls it back, still three and two. I did say that. That's right. Just want to keep everything up above board. That is correct. <laughs> Bob Nepper, the on deck batter, and he is a good hitting pitcher. Three and two to Ashby. Nobody out. The Mets up by a run on a home run by Daryl Strawberry. Line drive, base hit, left field. Hubie Brooks jumped for the ball but couldn't come up with it. And Walling, because he had to hold up to see whether the ball was caught or not, only could go to third. So the Astros have runners at first, third, nobody out. Well, Gooden makes a good pitch right here. He jams the batter, but it's sliced just over the head of the third baseman. They all count, and they all look like line drives in the newspaper the next day. So the first hit given up by Gooden, and now Houston with runners at first and third with a pitcher coming up. 
Still nobody out. Keith Hernandez is going in to talk to Gooden, reminding him just to worry about the out. Don't worry about the runner at the plate. Could be a bunning situation, but I highly disagree with it if it is. Swing and a miss. 0 and 1 to Nepper. Most of the swinging strikes, I think it's fair to say, have been out of the strike zone, Ralph. In this inning, especially. And I guess it would follow that most of the call strikes have been in the strike zone. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Brilliant deduction by, by two ex major leaguers. <laughs> Very good logic. <laughs> oh, and one to Nepper. Swing and a miss. Another high rider. Oh, and two to Bob Nepper. Infield and double play depth. Hernandez holding on Ashby at first, who is not a threat to steal, as you see your infield there. I think Keith ought to be behind him here. Ashby's not going anyplace. But, of course, I said Walling wasn't either, right? Well, Ashby's a lesser chance to steal. Swing and a miss. He got him. Fourth strikeout for Dwight Gooden. And a big one it was because now a double play will get him out of the inning. And right here, again, going to the heater. And the swing and the miss. So Nepper struck out on three pitches, fastballs. Now we go back to the top of the batting order. Bill Doran, the second baseman, tapped to second his first time up. The Astros with only one hit. Gooden has allowed one walk. Both those runners on base now, first and third, and one out. Strike on the outside part. Joe West, a very deliberate umpire behind home plate. Dorn is very, very tough to double. He runs extremely well, especially from the left side. Bill one for 13 on the young season. That a hit against the Mets in last night's game, a game in which the Mets won eight to one. And a bunt attempt. It looked like somebody missed the squeeze on that one. Well, somebody either missed the squeeze because you wouldn't be putting on a safety squeeze in this spot. I no don't way. believe. I don't think I've seen the safety squeeze used since 1943 <laughs> when I was two. <laughs> <laughs> now the runner at third base is being talked to by the third base coach, which is sort of an indication that somebody didn't get the sign, and that'd be Dennis Walling. And the third base coach, Dennis Minky, Don Leppert, the first base coach for the Astros. 0-2 to Doran. Ooh, good pitch. He fight it off, fought it off and stayed alive. Terry Poole, the on-deck hitter, as the outfield shaded around toward left field. Darrell Strawberry is shaded toward right field, so they're almost playing Doran like a right-handed pull hitter. Swing and a miss, he got him. Oh, what two strikeouts they were. First the pitcher, Bob Nepper, and now Doran, the second baseman. And he gets him with a fastball, a high fastball in a perfect spot, and Doran just tied up on the ball. He just did not have a chance. That is the high rider, my friend, I'll tell you. Fifth strikeout for Dwight Gooden, and now, for all intents and purposes, it'll take a base hit to score Denny Walling from third. No fly ball or infield out or something of that nature. Fastball is inside to Terry Poole, who also tapped the second his first time up. Five strikeouts for Dwight Gooden, and we're only in the third. Well, last year he struck out 300 batters in 191 innings. That at Lynchburg, the Class A affiliate of the Mets, he only gave up 121 hits. And only walked 112. Check swing, foul ball, one and one to pool. Walling at third base. Ashby at first. One nothing Mets. We're in the bottom of the third at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. Swing and a miss. One and two to pull. 
The interesting thing about this Houston club is they're a tough club to strike out. That is very true. They have a lot of contact hitters and hitters that don't try to hit the ball out of the ballpark. They are the type of hitters that like to bounce the ball. One through eight. One and two to Terry Poole. Pops him up. He should be out of it. Jose Okendo squeezes it, and what a job by Gooden. With runners on first and third, nobody out. Gooden came back. He struck out Bob Nepper and Bill Doran and got Terry Poole on a pop. And the Mets lead one to nothing after three. Now here's a word from Bud Light. Woo. Top of the fourth inning for the play-by-play, -play, Steve Zabriskie. Thank you, Timmy. Jose Okendo to lead it off here in the top of the fourth, the number two man in the batting order to face Bob Nepper. Jose single to center his first time up. And he squares but takes a strike on a breaking ball. One to nothing, New York. One run on three hits, no errors for the Mets. No runs, one hit, and no errors for the Astros as Dwight Gooden has struck out five through the first three. One and one. Steve, you notice how close Jose Okendo is to the plate? Last night, the home plate umpire, who was Jerry Crawford, told him to move up on the plate, but look how close he is. He is much, much closer to the plate than he was last year. And his stance is a little different, too. He's mm -hmm. closed he's kind of, his stance. He's closed and a little bit more uh, with the weight on the back foot. There's certainly nothing wrong with that. See, he's almost out of the box right there. And see that right foot? And he'll edge that foot back, as you see there. Of course, he's hitting 444 right now. I guess uh, it's working for him. I told him before the game what he ought to do is what Clemente used to do. He came up to the plate and he wiped out the back line and you couldn't tell where he was standing. <laughs> you, see, you see other hitters doing that. Sure. Guys who like to stand deep in the box. Sometimes the umpire will take their bat away from him and draw a line for him. Breaking ball fouled off and the count holds at one and two. Now that's supposed to be 35 inches from the from the front of the plate. That's the back part of the batter's box but that like a lot of rules in baseball are overlooked on more than one occasion. You never know for sure if those lines are drawn properly before the game begins. Each ballpark is different too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a ground ball to third. Denny Walling gets a nice hop and makes a good throw and there's one away here in the fourth. Here's the last out recorded by Dwight Gooden in the third inning. And watch Dwight Gooden's parents' reaction after Jose Okendo makes the catch. All right. Dan and Ella Gooden watching their first major league game flying in from Tampa, Florida. And there's the man of their hour every hour. <laughs> That's right. As Mrs. Gooden says, he's my baby whether he wins or loses. That's right. Keith Hernandez fouls off the first pitch for strike one. Hernandez struck out his first time up, hitting 071 on the year. Keith hit 297 last year between St. Louis and the Mets. The fastball grounded foul and it's 0 and 2. Mrs. Gooden tickled me during our inter interview before the game. She told me that it was her first airplane flight. And I remember my parents' first flight was to New York City for the 64 series, a series in which I participated. So see their baby play. <laughs> Not line. baby, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Your mother may feel differently. <laughs> a line drive to center field for Hernandez, and Keith picks up only his second hit of this young season. So with one out, Hernandez at first base, and George Foster, the man of the night last night, will be the hitter. Bob Nepper went back to the well for another cup of water. That little break it ball on the outside that he got Hernandez with the last time, and. Keith was looking for it even with two strikes and he ripped it back up the middle. Good piece of hitting by Hernandez. And that's what good hitters will do. Yes, sir. They will yes, not sir. get beaten twice. <laughs> On the outside corner to Foster for strike one. George hitting 357. He flied out to left field his first time up. Throw to first. But Hernandez had a short lead. Almost hit Foster. It's one and one. That's what Nepper likes to do, and you have to do that on George. The difference is about three ounces. George dropping down to that 32 ounce bet. 
foregoing that black beauty he's been using. Off speed pitch misses. Two and one. Tell you what, you got a lot of third basemen in the league tell, telling their pitchers all the time do not throw inside <laughs> change ups to George Foster. <laughs> My glove is not big enough <laughs> to protect me. Denny Walling at third is playing relatively deep. Another throw to first. This time Hernandez, who was near the cutout of the turf, has to dive back. Now Hernandez with one foot on the turf, and the pitch is outside. It's three and one to Foster. George will take a little time now. And a good pitch and a good cut, but no contact. It's three and two. On deck, Daryl Strawberry, who has produced the only run of the ball game with a tremendous home run to center field in the second inning. Major league hitters rarely look inside, and they rarely get a pitch inside that they can pull when the pitcher's behind in the count. Saw that 3 1 fastball outside. Looks like they're going to come inside this time. And Foster fouls it straight back. The count holds at three and two. In the post-game interview last night, George was telling you that he, you can't, as you have often said on the air, you can't protect both. You've got to either be looking away and adjust inside, which is easier to do than looking inside and trying to adjust away. Yeah, and as George said, it's easier said than done. You cannot adjust away when you're looking inside, but you can fight it off looking outside. And he hits it the other way, deep to right field. Poole is going back on the track. He won't get it. It's off the wall. Hernandez held up at second for a moment. Goes to third and fosters in with a double. He had a pair of doubles last night, his third double in two ball games, and the Mets have runners at second and third with one out. I tell you what, you call that by inference then, that fastball away that George Foster popped. Now check the last time Daryl Strawberry was up, a fastball away, and he gets under it. What appeared to be a routine out, not a routine out, but a deep out. Is Daryl Strawberry's second home run of the year. It's going to be interesting to see if they pitch to him here, even though it's lefty against lefty. That's a good point. First base is open, only one out. Strawberry has proven that he can hit left handed pitching. Four home runs off left handers last year. So now a total of five. And they are going to pitch to him. And it's inside. I would imagine that they will pitch to him very carefully, however. Well, it's an interesting situation because you got Mookie on deck who strikes out a lot, but if he makes contact, he doesn't get doubled up a lot. So we'll see. Another breaking ball. This one's in there, and it's one and one. Infield playing in all the way around. That's kind of interesting also because a ball that gets through there with them playing in, two runs score, not one. We're only in the fourth inning. And a ground ball to second. Hernandez is not coming home, and the throw goes to first, and there are two away. As I don't agree with that. I don't either. I say you send the runner anytime you have uh, in a tie ball game, anytime you're ahead, anytime unless you're two runs down. Runners at second and third, you send the runner from third base because the very worst that can happen is you end up with runners at first and third and two out, which would have been the case there. So they nail Hernandez at home. Well, then at least you're taking a chance on scoring a run in the process of making the out at home. And there's always the chance that the ball could be thrown away sure, or mishandled sure, or something. Certainly. I mean, it's not a bang bang play. No. no play to a catcher is bang bang. And you've got to tag the runner, too. There's no force. Breaking ball to Mookie Wilson misses. 1 0. Wilson grounded back to the pitcher his first time up. Mookie hitting an even 400, although he hasn't been up very many times. He missed two ball games that shoulder problem swing and a miss one and one some people will say well you've taken a runner out of scoring position but what you've done in the process of doing that is not especially with Daryl Strawberry uh, hitting because he can steal second 
But what you've done, you've taken a chance on scoring a run, and a run that's not a routine play. And a called strike and a beauty from Nepper, and it's one and two. If you're two runs down and you send the runner from third, then you end up with a runner at first and third and two out, but not a runner in scoring position. So you do it with runners at second and third and anything less than one run down. That's my that's the way I play it. I would agree and it kind of goes against the aggressive baseball David Johnson has been playing for him not to send the run. But as we have said many times up here there are many ways to play it. That's why it's a great game to talk about. There's, There's Davey Davey. Frank Howard. One and two still to count on Mookie two out with runners at second and third. And a hard shot base hit inside the line fair ball two runs will score Mookie heading for second as Hernandez comes home Foster scores and Wilson has a stand up double and the Mets lead it three to nothing. And that's exactly what Davey will tell me when I talk to him about it tomorrow. <laughs> Just how do we make out. <laughs> Mookie Wilson rips this breaking ball again looking for it it appeared a little lazy breaking ball didn't have any downward bite and Cruz feels it but much too late now the Mets lead three zip all right. Mookie's at second with two out and Hubie Brooks the batter Hubie flied out to Jerry Mumphrey in left center field his first time up. Batting 250 on the year. And another shot this one handled by Walling and the inning is over but the Mets pick up two runs on three hits no errors and one man left on base in the middle of the fourth inning from the Astrodome it's the Mets three and Houston nothing. Now here's a word from manufacturers Hanover. Well fans we want to remind you as you look at Daryl Strawberry that Strawberry Sunday will take place on the first Sunday of the season at home April 29th when the Mets meet the Phillies at 1 30 in the afternoon all fans will receive a free Strawberry Sunday in a salute to Daryl Strawberry the 1983 National League Rookie of the Year. So come on out to shave for Strawberry Sunday. We'll and, if you, and if you like we'll give you all the good ones on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we were kidding around before the game. Say, wondering if we could say Dwight's a good one. <laughs> you can say anything you want if he keeps pitching like he has been. <laughs> That's a, that'll play in Tennessee. Won't That's it? <laughs> right. Got that right. Here's Dickie Thon, who struck out his first time up. One of five. Gooden has recorded as the Astros bat here in the bottom of the fourth inning, and that breaking ball almost nipped Dickie Thon. Gooden has allowed one hit through the first three innings of work. He struck out those five and walked one. Another curveball drops right in there and it's one and one. That's the third time tonight he's thrown the breaking ball after missing with the breaking ball the first pitch. You love to see that. 19 years old and he has a confidence throwing the breaking ball over with a 95 mile an hour fastball. And there was the fastball that missed outside. It's two and one. I tell you, I hate to be too hyped about any player, but. This young man, like Strawberry last year, is easy to get excited about. Ground ball to second base. Gardenhire gobbles it up. One away here in the fourth. Well, you know, they both, not only do they look alike, but they both have a similar attitude about themselves, whether they're on the field or not. They're, they're under control. They're competitors. They are within themselves. They know what they're about, and they have a great deal of poise and confidence, which is a trite and overused phrase, but they do for young men. Jose Cruz now looks at a ball low. Cruz grounded a short his first time up. I think you got to have a little meanness in you too. And both of them are tough inside. They're tough young men. That's right. I hate the term kids because they're not kids. No. <laughs> you have to be a man to be out there. You got that right. Two balls, no strikes to Jose Cruz. And 3 0. Gooden ran into a bit of a problem in the third inning, walking Denny Walling, the leadoff batter, and giving up a single to Alan Ashby. 
but he pitched out of it with a pair of strikeouts and there's strike one it's three and one good hitting situation for Cruz he is one of the better cripple hitters in the league he gets you in a situation where you have to throw a fastball he can be awfully tough and there's the fastball popped up and drifting out of play down the left field line it's three and two and that gives you an idea how hard Gooden is throwing when a guy like Jose Cruz who as we've said is a good cripple hitter if he can't get around a fat on a fastball when he's looking for it well that gives you an idea the ball's getting up there pretty pert mm. I'll tell you from this center field shot you really can't appreciate how hard he throws ground ball Gooden flags it down with a nice play two away the reason for that of course is the ball is moving away from you as you look at it yeah on television baseball is such an easy game to play isn't it? even when you're sitting up here yeah it looks easy yeah it really does that monitor really slows things down it appears but it is an awfully difficult game to play as everyone realistically knows Jerry Mumphrey looked at a called third strike his first time up and he takes a ball Mumphrey hit 262 with the Yankees last year and came over here to Houston and hit 336 as an Astro last year. Right now he's hitting an even 300. Fastball fouled away and Mumphrey couldn't get around on it. Don't get around much anymore. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> it is a great song. <laughs> Don't hurt. Don't hurt it, though. <laughs> Maybe I should say it. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Our director, Bill Webb, takes exception. <laughs> One ball, two strikes on Mumphrey. Two out, nobody on here in the bottom of the fourth inning with the Mets leading three to nothing. Breaking ball, and that was a feeble attempt to hit it right back to Gooden. And a 1-2-3 inning for Dwight on three ground balls, two of which he fields himself. So we'll go to the fifth from the Astrodome. The Mets still holding a 3-0 lead right after this word from Dotson. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, we'll be right back at you here on WOR-TV as Mike Torres, the opening day starter in Cincinnati, will go against Joe Necro. Both pitchers lost their opening games for their respective clubs. It'll be the final game of this three-game series, 7 o'clock Eastern time. From the Dome tomorrow night right here on Channel 9. And other National League action today, Steve. The Phillies over the Cincinnati Reds. Our old pal Jerry Kuzman won his first start for the Phillies. They won 9-1. to one. Frank Pastore, the loser. Pittsburgh over L.A. A disgruntled John Candelaria, the winner, beating the <laughs> Dodgers 3 to nothing. Alejandro Pena, the loser. St. Louis at San Francisco. The Cardinals firmly thrashed by the Giants. Their first win of the year, the loser. Robinson for the Cardinals or I beg your pardon the winner Robinson and the loser Dave LaPointe and Montreal over Atlanta two to one that that game in the bottom of the six now Palmer relieved by James Pete Falcone for the Braves and here's Mike Fitzgerald to lead it off for the Mets here in the top of the fifth inning and Bob Nepper throws a breaking ball low and inside for ball one Fitzgerald single to center his first time up so Mike one for one on the year. And this ball's popped up playable behind first base Bill Doran the second baseman makes the play and there's one out in the American League today 13 to 4 the Minnesota Twins over the winless Baltimore Orioles and Detroit of course as Ralph mentioned earlier a no hitter thrown by Jack Morris as they beat the White Sox 4 to nothing and that's the record of the Tigers 4 and 0 New York losing to Texas in a rain delay game 8 to 5. Boston three to nothing over Oakland Kansas or Kansas City will host Cleveland later as will California host Toronto. Now you're up to date mm -hmm. and Dwight Gooden for his second major league at bat takes a called strike. And a ground ball nubbed toward third Denny Walling up with it Gooden runs well but Walling throws him out and there are two away. Walling of course playing third base in place of Phil Garner who is still bothered by that upper respiratory infection Garner's in uniform and has been working out but they're going to ease him back to duty and probably the first appearance might be as a pinch hitter before he actually starts in the lineup Ron Garden higher like all leadoff hitters taking his time to allow Gooden to get back in the dugout and sit down for a minute especially with two out 
Garden Hire is lined to short and struck out swinging. And that's outside ball one. Right back up the middle, base hit to center field as it gets through both the shortstop Dickie Thon and the pitcher Bob Nepper, a two out single for Ron Gardenhire. Tell you, that's the way Pete Rose has made his living over the last 22 years. Right back through the originator, he used to say. <laughs> <laughs> and that went back right between the wickets of Nepper and Ron Gardenhire on first base. Pete Rose, by the way, will be with those Expos when the Mets host them. April 17th, Tuesday. Yep, three game series. A brief home stand. The Mets go back on the road after that, so mm -hmm. be there. Pop fly to center field by Jose Okendo. Mumphrey drifting in, and the inning is over. A hit and no runs, but the Mets still lead the Astros in the middle of the fifth inning, three to nothing. Back at the dome after this word from Exxon. As we go to the bottom of the fifth inning, we want to remind you of a Channel 9 special presentation. Brooke Shields and Lee Majors host your choice for the Film Awards, the People's Choice for this year's Academy Awards, tomorrow afternoon at 5 o'clock, right here on Channel 9. And we're in the bottom of the fifth inning. The Mets have a 3 0 lead. Dwight Gooden, in his first major league start, has allowed one hit. That an opposite field. Jam job by Alan Ashby back in the third inning. He has walked one. He has struck out five. The walk and the base hit the only Astros to get on base. The defense has played flawlessly behind him. And the batter, Ray Knight. Ray, a strikeout victim back in the second inning. Ray batting 250 on the year. Four for 16. Ray Knight, another one of the Astros who's felt the effects of this virus that's going through the ball club 19 players on the Astros have had symptoms of the flu fastball strike inside part 0 and 1 fastball ripped the center Wilson back on his mule he makes the catch and there's one away yeah as you stated earlier well, we'll look this. at it again. Mm -hmm. Ray Knight gets a hold of this ball, but a, again, a testament to how hard the ball strawberry hit was. The ball just doesn't carry here. And Mookie Wilson, who was playing a rather shallow center field, went back with plenty of room to spare to make the catch. I was going to say, Steve, the one most affected by that virus, as you said earlier, Phil Garner, the third baseman. And he may be back in action tomorrow, but they may give him another two days off as the Astros do have an off day on Monday. Here's Denny Walling. He walked and stole a base in the third. Breaking ball, strike. 0 and 1 to Denny Walling. Line drive, left field. Almost a carbon copy of the first hit by Alan Ashby. Second hit of the ball game for the Astros, both being singles. Well, they're still not getting around on Gooden's fastball, but here. At least this time Walling got the fat part of the bat on it as opposed to Ashby's jam job, but he still has to hit it the other way, a looping single to left. Only the second hit off Dwight. And Mike Lacoste, the big right-hander who was in last night's game, is warming. And should Alan Ashby get on there, I would imagine Bob Nepper will be lifted for a pinch hitter. Ashby batting 273. Breaking ball, check swing. Yes, he went around. 0-1. I think it's fair to say that Gooden has made his point, regardless of what happens here on out. It's so very vital to get that first toe hole in the National League or any league, either the National or the American. Breaking ball, strike 0 and 2. And what a beauty. What command he has of that curveball. And you know, Tim, the reason for that, saying getting that toe hold and getting off to a good start really points up how much the mental aspects of this game go come into play. Dwight Gooden obviously has the physical skills but to get off to a good start does a great deal for his psyche. Fastball foul back as Yogi Berra used to say 90 percent of hitting is half mental. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> 
They blame Yogi for every saying, every faux pas, and non sequitur right. in the <laughs> history of our language, don't they? If it's if it sounds unusual, Yogi probably <laughs> said it. 0-2 to Ashby. Breaking ball just misses outside. Three to nothing. The Mets lead. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Solo home run by Daryl Strawberry and a two-run double by Mookie Wilson. Responsible for the Mets' three runs. The Astros having only two hits so far. Fastball misses inside. Two and two. As we said earlier, look at Harry Spillman who may be the hitter in case Alan Ashby gets on. Breaking ball, tap to first, Hernandez the second. Okendo covering, not in time, and they get Ashby at first. The throw pulled Okendo off the bag, but he alertly threw the ball back to first, and the big thing is they got an out. Very easily could have come away with nothing and only Okendo's quickness saved an out here. Really a routine ground ball or double play ball, but Hernandez just flips the ball wide of second and Okendo had to come off the bag to catch the ball and then almost immediately came back. Gooden hustling over, got his foot stepped on by Ashby, but recorded the out at first base. So score that three to six to one for the put out. As Walling was safe at second base and the batter's gonna be Harry Spillman. A little confab on the mound out there. Spillman's, oh, excuse me, Timmy, Spillman's been up one time so far as a pinch hitter without a hit this season. Manager Davey Johnson looking on along with hitting instructor Bill Robinson. Spillman was 13 for 78 for a 167 average last year, primarily as a pinch hitter. He was acquired by the Astros for Rafael Landestoy back in 1981. 29 years old, lives in Albany, Georgia. Denny Walling at second base. So Bob Nepper leaves the ball game, and Bob Mike Lacoste will be the pitcher in the top of the six. Fastball low. 1 and 0 to Harry Spillman. Longtime Cincinnati Red. Fastball is high, 2-0. That's why when you go out and you're facing a new hitter, just go out with a guy like Gooden and say, throw the ball right over the plate. Look for the heart of the plate. But that fastball you got, don't try and be too cute. That's right. This guy's coming off the bench cold. Fastball is high, 3-0 to Spillman with Bill Doran on deck. Tough enough to gauge that fastball when you've seen it a couple of times, much less coming up there ice cold. 3 0 to Spillman. Fastball misses, four straight balls to Spillman. And Dwight Gooden gives up his second walk of the evening. And the tying run in the person of Bill Doran will be the batter. Doran has struck out and grounded to second. Off to a slow start, only one for 14 on the year. Davey Johnson and pitching coach Mel Stottlemyre. Uh, Mel loves it too, doesn't he? Working with these young pitchers. Of course, no stranger to the New York scene. <laughs> Pitched for the Yankees for 13 years. What a competitor he was too. Breaking ball misses. 1 and 0 to Bill Doran. Astros have runners at first and second. There are two out, but the Mets have the lead. 3 to nothing. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Fastball misses. Six straight balls thrown by Gooden. That one out that Okendo got looms very, very large right now. It appears that Gooden still has good stuff. 
but may have just lost his rhythm a little bit here. Fastball is high, 3 and 0, oh, seven straight balls thrown by Gooden. The dugout is bustling, the Met dugout that is, and it looks like there's going to be some activity. Junior Ortiz, the catcher, going down to warm up. Dick Tidro. There's Dick. 3 0 to Bill Doran. Gooden will try to come back on him. No way he'll be hitting here. There's the strike. 3 and 1. Now you can look for him to hack. You're hitting, partner. <laughs> look up don't, here. We'll let you know. That's right. Don't, don't bother looking down at Dennis Menke. That's right. You're hitting. You have a child on second base. Fastball strike three and two. Looked like he was taken all the way. Contrary to the strategy in the booth. <laughs> well, that's happened before. <laughs> and will don't happen again. <laughs> I don't believe he was taken all the way there. Line drive, left field, base hit. George Foster over to cut it off. And he cut it off nicely because he saved another run as Harry Spillman pulls in the third. And it's now a three to one ball game. Bill Doran delivers. An RBI single to left field as Spillman moves to third. Only Doran's second hit of the year. Fastball again away, and Doran going the other way with it. George Foster hustling over and really made a fine play to cut this ball off. George may have twisted his ankle a little bit as Okendo couldn't handle the short hop, but Hernandez alertly backing up prevented the runner at third from advancing on home. Spillman holding there, and Stottlemyre now on the mound to talk it over with Fitzgerald and Gooden. So the shutout is gone. The third hit in the ball game for Houston plates their first run. I don't think any pitcher worries about a shutout. I think the W is much more important. Mel Stottlemyre knows that. Certainly a veteran of Major League Wars with the New York Yankees. Mel's two sons, by the way, go to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas branch. And one of them is a pretty good candidate to play for the Olympic baseball team this year. Baseball is a demonstration sport in the Olympics for the uh -huh. very first time and probably in the next Olympics will be a competition. Terry Poole 0 for 2. Ball hit well the center. Mookie is there. And Terry Poole hit it well but Mookie Wilson flags it down. So Dwight Gooden is out of further trouble. One run on two hits. No errors. And two men left. So at the end of five innings of play here at the Astrodome, a good ball game. The Mets three and the Astros one. Now here's a word from a good beer, Budweiser. Top of the sixth inning, the Mets lead three to one and a new pitcher for the Astros. Mike Lacoste, whom the Mets have already seen in last night's ball game. Lacoste, as you see, 1-0 oh in spring training with no ERA. Last year he was 5-7 and seven for Houston with a 4.43 ERA. And he pitched two innings last night, giving up one hit, no runs. This is his second appearance of the year. Mike pitched for Cincinnati for four years. He was unconditionally released. Kind of a strange thing to happen for a 25-year-old pitcher with an arm like that. And he was picked up by the Astros in 82. He was 6-6 six and six in 82, and as you said, 5-7 and seven last year. And he'll be facing the heart of the Met order, Hernandez, Foster, and Strawberry. 3-1 to one Mets. Fastball is outside to Hernandez, who's one for two with a run scored. Well, Swanee had to get some help after last night. Ron Darling also helping him guard Dick Tidro in the bullpen. If you were with us, you saw Swanee almost have a heart attack. Hernandez gets a piece of it, fouls it back, one and one. Last night, the ball was hit sharply into the bullpen, and I don't know if Craig wasn't watching or what, but it almost ate him alive. <laughs> he had to go into the dugout and recuperate. I don't know what that says about the size of a pitcher when it takes two guys to guard him. <laughs> that Tindrow is a pretty big guy. 1-1 <laughs> one, one to Hernandez. Fastball is outside 2-1. and one. With Tidrow continuing to throw, would you think that 
Dwight Gooden has seen the end of his pitching tonight after that shaky fifth inning. Ground ball to Thon, who throws out Keith Hernandez. And there's one away. Well, you bring up an interesting point. Would they let him go on if there were nothing physically wrong with him? Or would they feel that at this point in the season, as young as he is, that that's just uh, as much as they want him to throw, having kept track of how many pitches he's thrown uh -huh. to this point? Well, Ralph Kiner just brought up an interesting point. It could be that Dwight is having problems with that index finger again. So we'll see whether he comes out to answer the bell in the sixth as Foster steps up. Pops up right side. Could be playable. Night over. And the ball into the first or second row of the stands. 0 and 1 to George, who's 1 for 2 with the run scored. Foster's home run last night, the 290th of his career. He and Rusty Staub are tied for 50th place on the all time home run list. 290 dingers, huh? It's a lot of times going around those bases. Our colleague Ralph Kiner went around them 368 times in only 10 years. That's Hitman. Sinker tap foul. 0 oh, and 2 to George Foster. That's 36.8 home runs a year for 10 years. Ralph ranking second to Babe Ruth in home run ratio per at bat. And Ralph hit a lot like the one Strawberry hit tonight. High and deep. Hit a lot down the left field line, too, from what I understand. <laughs> Low fastballs. <laughs> no wonder he doesn't like guys being pitched down and in. <laughs> Kiner's corner. Oh, Forbes Field. One and two to Foster. He got him with a slider. So Foster goes down on strikes. A good pitch to George. Breaks right straight down, and George swings right over the top of it. You know, the Mets went eight to one last night, and 11 Mets went down on strikes for the evening. And that along with 14 base hits for the Mets. Uh huh. A lot of activity. Here's Strawberry homered his first time up tonight. Slider on the outside part of the plate. A little teaser. It's 0-1 to Darrell. Slider is low. 1-1 to Darrell Strawberry. Darrell's second home run of the year. He has two of the three the Mets have, as you mentioned. George Foster with the other one last night. There's that slider in on the fist there. So it's one and two to Daryl Strawberry. Lacasse, a very unusual delivery. He's 6'5, weighs 190 pounds. Looks like it's all arms and legs coming at you. Speaking of legs, Strawberry still bothered by a slight hamstring pull in his right leg and still playing with it taped up. Well, he went for a bad ball. Lifts it to left field. Jose Cruz, the left fielder, makes the one-handed catch. And for the first time in this ball game, the Mets are retired in order. As we go to the middle of the sixth, they have a 3-1 lead. Now, here's a word from Ivory. Well, we're back, and the Mets have a new pitcher as we theorized in the top of the sixth it's Dr. Dirt Dick Tidrow and as you see a spring training record 0 2 but a good ERA of 2.53 this is his second appearance he pitched the opening day game one inning in relief at Cincinnati gave up no hits no runs struck out one batter last year with the White Sox Tidrow two and four with a 4.22 ERA and so the doctor Dwight Gooden sits down after five innings of work. He gave up one run on three hits, struck out five, and walked two. And an outstanding job in his major league debut. Dwight Gooden, Dick Tidrow, faced Dickie Thon, who's 0 for 2 on the evening. Thon betting 385. Fastball outside to Dickie Thon, who led the National League in game winning RBIs last year. Dick Tidrow used to be with the Yankees, the Chicago Cubs. Line drive, base hit for Dickie Thon to left field. So the Astros have the leadoff runner 
on for the second time in this ball game. Denny Walling led off the third inning with the base on balls, and the tough Jose Cruz will be the batter. Find a threat to run. Had 34 stolen bases last year. Cruz 0 for 2 on the evening. Vicky Thon now has hit in all four games so far this year the Astros have played. Coming into this game, only two Mets had hit in all of their games, that being Wally Backman and Hubie Brooks. And Mike Fitzgerald coming out of there. You really got to be careful with the guy on first base like that. If you lift that rear end, a lot of times you can block that umpire out of that pit. I think he might have pitch. he might have taken a strike away there because that ball was right at the knees and over the plate. You got to keep your rear end low when you're coming out of that shoot to give the umpire a good shot. You end up throwing better too. Thon not going. Fastball inside. Two and zero. Oh. The Mets lead three to one, but the Astros threatening the tough Jose Cruz with a count two and oh. Fine at first, nobody out. Fastball low, and Dick Tidrow wanted that pitch. He glares in to Joe West, the home plate umpire. Three and oh to Cruz. There's a strike. You see Fitzy's coming up too soon back there, and that can really mess an umpire up. Because after all, the out's more important than thwarting the stolen base right here. They've got a two-run lead, not a one-run lead. Three and one to Cruz. Bond not going. Fastball outside, and Jose Cruz is on there. So the Astros have runners at first and second. We're in the sixth, and Jerry Mumphrey going down to talk to third base coach Dennis Menke. Fine shortstop for the Milwaukee and Atlanta Braves, and here with the Astros, Cincinnati Reds, 13-year major league veteran. And Frank DePino, the left-hander, warming for the Astros. Well, what a year he had last year with 20 saves. Mm. He's the reason many people feel the Astros have one of the best bullpens around, even without Joe Sambito. He, along with Bill Dolly, who had 14 saves last year. Here's Mumphrey. He's 0 for 2 this evening, and he tries to punt. And it's an errant attempt, and it's 0 and 1. Mets will probably try to make sure the sure out here instead of trying anything so fancy got to get the one sure out here they lead by two but the Astros are threatening oh and one to Mumphrey you know what Tidrow was doing then he was staring off the signs a lot of pitchers like to do that they don't shake off they stare it off fine at second Cruz at first nobody out Fastball, he was ripping, and he swings through a fastball, 0-2 to Jerry Mumphrey. Good time for a double play, Stevie, my boy. <laughs> well, they don't call it the pitcher's best friend for nothing. Ray Knight on deck. These are the situations where it becomes a pitcher's bosom buddy. Fastball had a funny swing at that. It's still 0-2. Looks like he's made up his mind late. Stuck his rear end out and just put the head of the bat on the ball. Here it is again. Count of 0 and 2. Just kind of flailed at it. That is not your Spalding guy <laughs> no. swing that you saw there. No. But Jerry Mumphrey, a good ball player. As you said earlier, he had 336 last year and 41 games for the Astros. Outfield deep. Mookie Wilson shading Jerry toward left center field. 0 and 2 the count. Fastball misses inside. 1 and 2. Had a long talk with Dick about the fact that I never could hit him. And I, and I couldn't figure it out. 
And he was talking about the hesitation in his pitch as we look at Davy Johnson, Mel Stottlemyre. There's a hesitation at the top of his kick that always fools left-handed hitters. Fastball gets by Fitzgerald. Oh, boy. It looked like the ball should have been handled, but we'll see how they score it. You'll get a chance to see it again. One ball and two strike count, and Fitzgerald should have caught that ball. You know, you talk about that hesitation. A lot of times, your catchers do what a hitter would do. They, even though he knows what's coming, this ball, it is scored a pass ball. I thought they would give him a pass ball because the ball wasn't in the dirt. The runners at second, third now, still only, still no outs, I should say. And it's two and two to Mumford. Ooh. Just misses outside. Three and two to Jerry Mumford. Tidro still glaring at home plate umpire Joe West, and with good reason, the second close call that has gone the Astros' way. Fastball is outside, and he loads him up. Jerry Mumphrey goes to first base, the second walk in the inning given up by Tidrell. And that's going to get Ed Lynch up in the bullpen. There's Ed Lynch. The Astros trail by two, but they have the bases loaded, nobody out. We're in the sixth. Ray Knight, the batter. Ray 0 for 2. He's due, of course, batting 231. He's a good RBI man, but he does not run well, which means that he's good for two also if he gets it on the ground. And the Mets are playing their infield at double play depth. Most certainly. Ball ripped to left field, way back. That ball is foul by inches. Oh, boy. Ray Knight gave it a Carlton Fisk shot. If you remember the famous shot in 1975 when Fisk tried a little body English on the ball he hit in the sixth game of the World Series against the Cincinnati Reds. And Ray Knight tried to do the same thing on that ball that he hit against Titro. Within a foot or two of a grand salami as Knight really turns on it and hits it deep down the left field line. See the orange line and the foul pole going up. And that ball lands above the orange line, hits the screen just a couple of feet left and in foul territory of the foul pole. Ray Knight is the last player to hit two home runs in one inning against the New York Mets. There have been 20 others, or 19 others, to do that. And he almost had himself a grand salami there, awfully close. Do you mean two home runs in one inning? Did I say one inning? Yeah. Yes. Base hit left field. Foster in. Cruz is going to try to score the throw. And he got him. Oh, boy. Jose Cruz not sliding. And the on-deck hitter, Denny Walling, said nothing to him. So it's a combination of errors and a nice play by Fitzgerald. And a good throw from Foster as well. Base hit by Ray Knight. Plates one to make it three to two. As Thon scores from third, Foster's throw is a strong one. And Fitzgerald, as Hubie Brooks lets it go, Fitzgerald plays it on the bounce, comes back and makes the tag right before Cruz steps on the plate. And as you said, the on-deck hitter, Ray, or rather, Denny Walling, said nothing to him about getting down. Neither did Dickie Thon, who had scored the run. So a big break for the Mets on a nice throw and a good play by Fitzgerald. Nice throw by Foster. Why hadn't... Why, or I should say, why wasn't Mumphrey and Knight, why didn't they move up a base to make them cut the ball off? A lot of things went wrong on that play. Fastball strike to Walling. With Mumphrey's speed, he should be on third base right now easily with that ball going through to home plate, but he's not. Ball hit sharply to left field, and even with no out, Dennis Minky sent him. Jose Cruz, that is. Fastball is outside, one and one to Walling. Well, what a break that was. Hmm. One out, the Astros have runners at first and second.
Foul ball, one and two by Walling. Walling did not have a good swing at that pitch, and again, you may be seeing what you talked about, Timmy. Uh, Left-handers have a problem with that hesitation in the motion. Mumphrey before yep. flailing at a ball, and that time, Walling didn't have a good cut. I know I always had problems hitting this guy. It's tough to pick up, and he would throw balls in an area where you would normally hack and have a good hack at him. Down and in area. One and two to Walling. Struck him out. And you know, even with that swing, he looked unsure of that swing. And that was down and in again. And a big strikeout for Tidrow. This ball breaking down and in. And as you see, Walling's hand coming off the bat, he did not have a good swing. He didn't really get into the ball at all. So Tidrow, tough on the left-handers. Not out of the woods yet. Alan Ashby, who's one for two, will be the batter. The Astros have five hits. The Mets with seven hits in the lead, three to two. You saw the Mets win a ball game on Wednesday night when Junior Ortiz tried to go to second base on a base hit to right where Hubie Brooks would have been a dead duck at home. That was the first run of the game that Darling won two to nothing. And tonight, had the Astros traded that run for the out, it would be a tie ball game right now. But they didn't force the play and make the Mets cut the ball off. Two out, first and second, three two Mets. We're in the sixth of a good ball game. Strike. 0 and 1 to Ashby. Lynch still warming for the Mets, and DePino still warming for the Astros. Slider misses away, one and one to Ashby. I think the tension for this early in the season is probably the way it is because everybody's pulling for Dwight Gooden to sink his teeth into his, to his first major league win, huh? I would think so. And the Astros, of course, have been uh, not going well. Fastball misses inside, two so and one. They're feeling a little bit of, a, of the pressure to get their season started, especially thinking back to last year, although they've won a game this year. Last year they lost their first nine. Early season woes may have cost them a pennant last year. They only trailed the Dodgers by six games when the season ended. Two and one to Ashby. Fastball strike. Just got the inside corner. So Joe West taketh away and Joe West giveth. This ball really runs in on Ashby. It looks like he cuts it a little bit. Tidrow's delivery. Sweeping across the inside corner. So it's two and two to Alan Ashby. Deuces are wild. Two outs, two and two on the hitter. Three to two the score. Mets are up. Nice play, Fitzgerald. The Fitzgerald who had a pass ball earlier in the inning comes back and makes a nice play on a ball in the dirt. Fitzgerald pouncing over now, keeping those hands down, getting his body in front of the ball. Looks like the ball ran right up his right arm. That's what you want it to do. Any, that's right. Any part of that body on the ball is the important thing to keep it in front of you. Yeah, you coddle it. Just like a strawberry sundae. <laughs> Three and two to Ashby. Fastball misses. It's low, and that's going to load him up. So the bases are loaded once more. Third walk in the inning given up by Tidrow. And we'll see who the batter is going to be. Probably that Craig Reynolds. Who pinch hit in last night's game. Nope. And that's wrong again. It's going to be <laughs> Enos Cabell. Cabell coming back to the Astros from the Detroit Tigers during the offseason play a couple of different positions and pinch hit. Now the Mets got a big break when George Foster threw out Jose Cruz at home plate earlier in the inning for the first out of the inning. Tidrow got Walling on strikes but now he walks Alan Ashby. Frank DePino will be the pitcher in the seventh inning. Last year, 
with Detroit. Cabell hit 311 with five homers and 46 RBIs, his career high batting average. He left the Houston Astros initially, along with Chris Borgios, for Bob Nepper, the starting pitcher in tonight's game, who stands to be the loser. He cannot win it. This Two is, out, bases loaded. Excuse me, Timmy. This is Cabell's first at bat this year. Slider strike. So Tidrow's ahead of him 0 and 1. Cabell came to the Astros initially in the Lee May trade back in 1974. So he's much traveled, but I'm sure he feels like he's back home here in the Dome. Swing and a miss. Hit another slider 0 and 2. And I remember this guy very vividly, Steve. You could throw the ball under a plate when you get ahead of him, and he'll swing at it. He's as free a swinger with two strikes as anybody around. Bases loaded, 0-2 to Cabell. Fitzgerald shifting outside. Line drive, center field, and Mookie Wilson's there, and he makes the catch. So a big break for the Mets with Foster throwing out Cruz, but the Astros do score one. Two hits, there were three walks in the inning. No outs, or no errors, and three men left on at the end of six in a great ball game. It's three to two, New York. Now a word from Dotson. Well, fans, don't fail to miss all the action of the next Mets home game right here on Channel 9, or rather the game on the road, I should say. The Mets again will take on the Houston Astros tomorrow night at 7 o'clock right here on Channel 9. Tomorrow night at 7, the final game of this three-game series, so don't miss it. On Channel 9, the home of the Mets. And a fellow who has been around the Mets as long as the Mets have been the Mets is back in, and as well as a new pitcher for the Astros. Here's Ralph Kiner. Okay, Steve, and the new pitcher, hard throwing to Pino, and he is uh, he is something else. The Mets three runs on seven hits, and the Astros two runs on five. The Pino was three and four last year with a 2.65 ERA. The Pino signed out of a tryout camp by Milwaukee. And he was in the Don Sutton trade. Came over with Kevin Bass and Mike Madden for Don Sutton. Last year was five and six with 20 saves. And his first pitch, a strike to Mookie Wilson. Well, Jay Horwitz, our PR director, informs me that uh, Dwight Gooden was taken out of the ball game because his limit on pitches that they had projected going into the ball game was reached. And there's nothing physically wrong with him. The finger's not bothering him, and he didn't hurt himself in any way. He's just thrown as many pitches as they'd like for him to tonight, and so Dwight's out of there. And he's on the plus side of this ball game, winning side at this point with the Mets leading by a score of three to two. Mookie Wilson has doubled in two times up, and this double drove in two big runs for the Mets. And it's strike two. One ball and two strikes. Mookie last season batted 276 with seven home runs and was the leadoff batter for the Mets at 54 stolen bases. Leading off here in the top of the seventh. Round ball, it is foul off of Mookie's foot. So Mookie will try and shake it off. Bob Neffer, the pitcher record on the losing side, worked the first five innings, was charged with three runs on seven, that struck out two. The cost worked one inning. And now DePino in the ball game here in the seventh. Mookie, a natural right-hand batter, learned how to switch it when he turned over to the left-hand side. One and two. Stayed alive on the foul ball. DePino's making his first appearance here in 1984 for Houston. Boy, he broke in well in his first major league start for Houston. He struck out ten batters in five innings, striking out his first four. Won that ball game against San Diego. Strike three. So DePino 
Comes in with a fastball and picks up his first victim. And that'll bring up Hubie Brook. DePino from Syracuse, New York. Made his major league debut against the Yankees on September 15, 1981, while pitching for Milwaukee. And a strike call. Looped into center field, going over as Jerry Mumphrey, and he tracks it down. So Hubie Brooks flies out to center field, two men away. And that'll bring up Mike Fitzgerald, who has a base hit and two times up. Fitzgerald single to center field in the third. Last base hit. The Mets had was back in the fifth inning, a single by Gardenhire. Ross Jones in the on deck circle for the Mets as the pitchers do up next. And that's ball one. Elsewhere in the National League, it was Philadelphia 9 to 1 over Cincinnati. Pittsburgh shut out L.A. 3 to nothing. Candelaria, the starter and winner. San Francisco pounded St. Louis 11 to nothing. And there's other action tonight. You know, a little known fact, at least it's not publicized to any extent, Candelaria has one of the best percentage win records in baseball. Does he? Well, he's a good one and unhappy in Pittsburgh. Two balls, no strikes to Mike Fitzgerald. Now ball three. Montreal is leading Atlanta 5-2, to two, bottom of the eighth inning. Benedict a home run for Atlanta, Wallach a home run for Montreal. Chicago has scored at San Diego in the top of the first and lead one to nothing. Trout against Whitson. And we'll check the American League later. All four, so the Mets get a base runner as Fitzgerald walks with two men away. That's the first walk that the Astros pitchers have allowed as you look at Doug Sisk in the Mets bullpen now. Minnesota beat Baltimore 13 to 4. Detroit shut out Chicago four to nothing as Jack Morris pitched a no hitter today in a rain shortened game Texas beat the Yankees eight to five Boston shut out Oakland three to nothing and Cleveland at Kansas City was rained out Toronto leads California one nothing bottom of the second no score first inning Milwaukee at Seattle and the batter for the Mets is Ross Jones acquired from the Dodger organization and the appeal play no swing says first base umpire Doug Harvey. So it's ball one. Ross Jones batting for the second time this year, both as a pinch hitter without a hit. And batting for Dick Tedrow, who worked one inning, gave up two hits, was charged with one run, and was earned, walked three, and struck out one. Now a strike call. It's one and one. Ross Jones was not on the Mets' main roster, but had a good spring and made the ball club. Batting with a runner at first base, Mike Fitzgerald there. Two men out in the top of the seventh. The Mets leading three to two. Two balls and a strike. DePino taking up some of the slack when Houston lost Joe Sambito, their ace left-handed relief pitcher. Sambito still trying to recover from an arm operation. Did pitch some this spring with a positive spring training but on the disabled list at this point and that's ball three three balls in the strike Ross Jones played for Albuquerque last year at the Dodgers Triple A Farm Club in the Pacific Coast League he hit 273 there and when you talk about Albuquerque you have to keep in mind that it's a mile high city or just about that high the ball travels very well there ball fouled away so well, the cat goes to three and two and the runner at first base Fitzgerald will be running with the pitch. Ross Jones a utility infielder. And taking the place of Bob Baylor in the Mets plans. Baylor going to the Dodgers. 
Runner goes, and that is ball four. Now the Mets have runners at first and second with two men out. And the batter coming up for the Mets is Ron Gardenhire. Ron with a base hit and three times up. The last Met to get a base hit back in the fifth. And a ball. Mets will be playing their first Sunday night game tomorrow night. Garden hire the batter, DePino the pitcher. And ball two. Well, Tidrow having trouble on the mound. In the bottom of the sixth inning, walking three, and now DePino behind with a count of two balls and no strikes after walking two. And Jerry Walker, one of the two pitching coaches that the Astros have, along with Les Moss, going out to talk to him is Bill Dolly, the right handed stopper in the Astros bullpen, warms up. Last year, Les Moss was the pitcher. Last year, Les Moss was the pitching coach. Good ones, you take the bat. 2 0 oh, the count. Good hitting spot here for Gardenhire. Gets a fastball, and he can't handle it, so the count now 2 and 1. For Davy Johnson last season and hit 287. He was a 063 hitter for the Mets in 17 games. Got a tough job here. Back to the fastball. It's hit to right field. Terry Poole will get it. And that catch retires aside. So the Mets get two walks and leave two, and the score at the end of six and a half innings. The Mets three and Houston two. the best way to enjoy Mets baseball is with 1984 season tickets with a home opener opener late this year that'll be on April 17th there's still plenty of time to come to Shea and select from the choice seat locations still available on a season basis the season tickets there's no waiting on lines you maintain the best seats for the big promotional days and you'll receive a substantial discount from the regular per game ticket price best of all you're near the action all year as the young Mets battled their National League opponents. If you don't want the full season plan, there are plenty of smaller ticket plans to choose from. So take advantage of the best sports buy in town and call for further information. Dial 212-507-TIXX. That's 507-TIXX. And please call Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. Well, Doug Sis, the new pitcher for the Mets, had a fine spring, was 3 and 1 with a 2.98 ERA. And this is his second appearance. Wednesday night, he saved the game as Junior Ortiz is in to catch. Doug, Pitt, Doug Sis picked up the save in relief of Ron Darling as the Mets picked up their first win. He pitched three innings against the Reds, gave up one hit, and struck out two. And Sis working to the leadoff batter, Bill Duran, here in the bottom half of the seventh. The Mets leading 3 to 2. They had three runs on seven hits the Astros two runs on five. First pitch a ball and now a foul ball and the count one ball and one strike. Last year with the Mets Doug Sisk picked up the opening day win in relief of Tom Seaver and had a record of five and four with eleven saves and a two point two four ERA. And he set a mid record for appearances with sixty seven breaking a record of sixty three held by Skip Lockwood. Fastball and it's ball two two and one the count. Duran in this game one for three had a base hit in the fifth off of the starting pitcher Dwight Gooden the doctor got a strike two and two opening day Doug Sisk got his first major league win working three innings against the Phillies Vern rule the veteran Vern rule throwing in the bullpen for Houston. Ground ball slowly out to the first base side. Hernandez will try for it, and he does make the play. 
It's a tough play. Hernandez decided he'd better take it himself and had to make the dive to the bag to get there. Well, he found out that Doug Sisk wasn't going to get there, and that was the only way he could record the out. As Hernandez picks up the ball, he can see right away that Sisk isn't over, and he has to dive and makes a fine play to record the out as Doran runs very well. Hernandez, probably the best fielding first baseman in the game. So one away, and the batter will be Terry Poole. Poole 0 for 3. As you look at the Golden Glover, Keith Hernandez. An idea about bunning Hubie Brooks at third base was right on top of that play. And Poole taking the pitch, it was out of the strike zone. Poole hitting 267 in this short season. 2 0. Oh. Well, if there's been one consistent problem that Doug Sisk has had, it's been allowing too many walks and pitching behind hitters did have a earned run average last year 2.24 and he misses again three and oh strangely enough Steve he was a sharpshooter and almost made the 1976 Olympic rifle team and he really could hit the target there <laughs> this is a little different there's a sinking fastball. He has a lot of movement on his fastball. And that might be one of the reasons why he has control problems. Dickie Thon in the on deck circle. He's a tough man. And this ball hitting the air to left field. Foster back near the warning track. And he makes the play. Sisk has given up only two home runs in his major league career. One to Mike Schmidt and one to Andre Dawson. They both won ball games against him. And here's Dickie Thon. Dickie one for three in tonight's ball game. Single to left field off Dick Tidro in the sixth inning. Later on scored. Mets leading three to two. Two men away. Bottom half of the seventh. And in the dirt. The catcher is Junior Ortiz. He came in the ball game with Doug Sisk. And we'd assume that they're heading straight up in the batting order. And again, he's behind, 2 0. Sisk constantly pitching behind the hitters. Thon with 20 home runs last season has amazing power for his size. And he fouls off the sinker, two and one. Thon gave up childhood for baseball. <laughs> started young, started at five years of age. I don't think baseball players ever give up childhood. <laughs> You think this is a kid's game, huh? No, it's it's a man's game, but you got to have some child in you. Now they count at two and two in the foul ball. Well, I've seen players cry like babies. <laughs> <laughs> We're inside at the Astrodome, and one of the things about here, it's very quiet when Houston's not doing anything. That goes to a full count of three and two. Sisk received a degree in criminal justice from Washington State. And sometimes what he does to the opposition is criminal. <laughs> they have a good baseball program in Washington State. That pack 10 now is one of the tough ones. Yep. Used to be the pack eight. Three two pitch. Ground ball right at Hubie Brooks. A one hopper. And the side retired. So in the inning, Houston goes down in order and the score at the end of seven. The Mets three and Houston two. Now word from Lincoln Mercury. 0 
Jose Okendo, the leadoff for the Mets. We're in the top of the eighth inning. The Mets leading by a score of three to two. It'll be Okendo, Hernandez, and Foster for the Mets against the hard throwing DePino. And Okendo looking for his second base hit. He's one for three tonight. Frank DePino on the mound for Houston. And it's grounded out to the third base side off the glove of Dennis Walling and it should go as an error. So Kendo on at first base with no one out here in the top of the eighth inning. The Mets looking for insurance runs. And it is scored an error as Walling comes over and it should have been a fairly routine play. He just flipped it out of the webbing of his glove. It just went right off the top. But the Mets have a base runner on with nobody out. And that is the first error of this ball game. This has been a fine game started back by Bob Nipper for Houston and Dwight Gooden for the Mets. Gooden making his major league debut. And he is the pitcher on the plus side right now as the Mets lead three to two. Keith Hernandez the batter. The runner goes and the ball hit out to the third base side. It will drop in for a base hit. Okendo on his way to third and he'll make that. Hernandez a big turn at first and decides to hold. So Hernandez back to first base on the hit and run play and the Mets now have runners at first and third with no one out. Well get the bat on the ball as the object in the hit and run and Keith did just that fortunately for he and the Mets it fell in and Davey Johnson continues to play that hit and run baseball and it's first and third a la last night with nobody out. Well the hit and run play the type of play that forces the batter to get the bat on the ball and you get a lot of blue base hits on it. He has to protect their runner and in that case Hernandez was protecting the runner and came up with a base hit and now it's George Foster. Foster double over the head of Terry Poole in right field back in the fourth inning for his base hit in this game. He's one for three. Last night he was four for five with a home run. And Houston playing in for a play at the plate. They have their infield in. And the fastball for ball one. Frank DePino walked two batters in his first inning to work and now has given up a base hit. Misses again. It's ball two and the count two and oh. Foster with that white bat in his major league career. He's always used a black bat. I went to that white bat yesterday and got four for five. Okindo the runner at third. Hernandez at first. Ground ball pulled foul. So the cat two balls and a strike. Well this time Swanee didn't uh, have to go into the dugout for repairs at least. Last night's ball game if you missed it Swan almost got decapitated out there trying to guard the warming <laughs> up pitcher. Jesse Orozco is throwing in the bullpen that's the reason Swan is out there. Two and one the count. And now two and two. Foster so far this season hitting 375, and that is Jesse Orozco. Two two pitches struck him out. So a big strikeout as Foster is set back to the bench. One away now. Second strikeout for DePino. The first one was looking, and George swings at a pitch that is not in the strike zone. A little over anxious. And it looked too as if he wanted to pull that ball, and that's close to impossible. Big strikeout for Houston, and it brings up Daryl Strawberry. Daryl homered over the center field fence in the second. That was his second home run of the season. He also has grounded out and flied out. Houston with their infield set up at half at a halfway point at short and second almost in. 
and a strike. Bill Dolly throwing in the bullpen for Houston. Missed with a breaking ball and accounted one ball and one strike. The Astros are not really playing a double play depth in the middle of the infield, which of course now with the strikeout of Foster could end the inning. Strawberry, however, a very difficult fellow to double up. And should they get that kind of ball, they're going to have a tough angle to turn it at second base, but they are concerned about allowing another run to the Mets. I don't believe they can make a double play on a ground ball against Strawberry. And that's strike two, one and two. Well, back in the fifth inning, Gooden pitched out of a big jam with some fine pitching. Now the penal trying to do the same. One ball, two strikes. Pino set to go. Struck him out. So with a runner on third and no one out, Foster and Strawberry strike out. That leads it up to Mookie Wilson. Left-hander tough on left-handers as he runs that ball away. Darrell hit his home run off the left-handed starter Nepper. But this time, the left-hander DePino won the battle. Mookie had a two out double to drive in two runs in the fourth inning. He is one for three in the game. And it's popped up and it's playable. First baseman Ray Knight in foul territory making the call. And the catch and DePino pitches out of a big jam. No runs, one hit, one error. Two men left on base, and the score at the end of seven and a half innings is the Mets three and the Astros two. Now, here's a word for manufacturer's handover. Well, we're going now to the bottom half of the eighth. The Mets leading three to two. And the Mets ace reliever, Jesse Orozco, making his first appearance in the regular season. 1 0 in the spring with an earn run average of zero. And Jesse coming in the ball game here with the Mets holding a one run lead and coming in for the play by play Steve Sabrisky. Thank you Ralph Jesse of course an outstanding year last year 13 and 7 with a 1.47 ERA and 17 saves Jose Cruz Jerry Mumphrey and Ray Knight in the bottom of the eighth for the Astros Mets leading three to two and Cruz who's over two plus a walk hit 306 against left handers last year fouled off strike one. Jose hitting 318 last year overall. So the Mets have the guy they want out there in this situation with a one run lead late in the ball game in Jesse Orozco. Strike two. Last time Jesse pitched was back on March 27th in spring training. And a two strike pitch fouled off. It's still 0 and 2. Jesse, of course, was devastating last year. Had the lowest ERA in the National League. He also was the choice for the Manufacturer's Handover Award, where he received a beautiful painting by Leroy Neiman. And again, Cruz fouls it off, still 0-2. Jose is hit off to a slow start, hitting only 100 so far this year. Got that first hit last night. Ground ball, Gardenhire charging, and makes a good, strong throw. There's one away. Not a routine play. And here's the switch hitting Jerry Mumphrey who will bat from the right side against Orozco. Mumphrey 0 for 2 plus a walk. Struck out looking and tapped back to the pitcher. Hitting 273. A 
feeble swing. Strike one. Astros have shown a propensity to swing at the first pitch all night long tonight, regardless of who's pitching. And strike two. Whatever happened to Eddie Stanky? Eddie, of course, in his heyday, tried to get on base any way he could, hit by a pitch ball, fouling balls off time after time after time. Could name Ron Hunt the same way. You don't see too many guys that'll take two and hit to right anymore, do you? Not at all. Ron Hunt was hit 50 times in one season. The all-time record. Of course, he's been hit more times than anybody ever played the game. And he has the bruises to show it. I used to wear a wetsuit <laughs> underneath his uniform, though, and the bruises didn't last as long. <laughs> two and two now. Ortiz reminding Orozco to get up on top with his delivery. And the breaking ball high again, and the count is full after Jesse had had Mumphrey 0 and 2. Both those last two curveballs were hanging curves. Orozco made four appearances versus Houston last year. Ten innings of work. He gave up five hits. Walked one and struck out seven. Fouled hard into the stands. He had three no decisions and one save. Take a look at Orozco's movement. It's tough on left-hand batters and tough on right-hand batters. And... He was obtained from the Twins for Jerry Kuzman. Outside, ball four, a one-out walk here in the bottom of the eighth to Jerry Mumphrey. Puts the tying run on base. Sixth walk given up by Met pitchers in this game. And here's Ray Knight. Knight with an RBI single to left his last time up, also struck out and flied to center. Ray Knight thought he had tied this ball game with that single, but Jose Cruz, who was on second base, failed to slide at home and was thrown out by George Foster. And at this point in the ball game, the key play of the game. Breaking ball high again. Knight, who hit 304 last year, hitting 286 so far this season. He's driven in three runs. Just narrowly missed a grand slam home run his last time up. Ball was fouled by about three feet. Popped up and playable. Gardenhire drifting out into short right field. Makes the catch. And this is not an easy ballpark for those high pop flies, even with the roof painted. Looked like the wind got that one. <laughs> Sometimes you can't pick that ball up very easily, but Gardenhire stayed with it, and now there are two out. And here's Denny Walling. Walling walked and stole a base in the third, single to left and scored in the fifth, and struck out swinging in the sixth. Now hitting 182. Go chases Mumphrey back. Mumphrey can steal. He has outstanding speed. And again, Orozco goes over there. Mumphrey, along with Gene Richards and Ozzy Smith, all three stole over 50 bases in one season for the San Diego Padres. The first time that was ever done. In the National League. Good fastball from Jesse. And Ortiz fakes a throw down to first base. 0 and 1 on Denny Walling. Mumphrey stole only seven bases last year. But as you said, Ralph, has good speed and is certainly capable. A little flip throw over. 
That throw is legal as long as you break contact with the pitching rubber. Breaking ball right in there. It's 0 and 2. And although Jesse has walked Jerry Mumphrey in this inning, he's been ahead of every hitter. He was 0 and 2 on Mumphrey before he walked him. Fly ball to center field. Mookie Wilson drifting over toward left has plenty of room, and the inning is over. So Roscoe gives up a walk, but no runs, and we'll go to the ninth inning here in the Astrodome with the Mets holding a one run lead over Houston. Right after this word from Budweiser. All this week, every movie here on Channel 9 is an Academy Award winner. Tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock, Kirk Douglas, Sir Lawrence Olivier, and Gene Simmons star in Spartacus. Right here on Channel 9 as we salute Oscar all this week. Final scores in the National League. Philadelphia 9, Cincinnati 1. Jerry Kuzman the winner, and McGraw got a save. Sounds like 1973. Pittsburgh over the Dodgers 3-0. Candelaria the winning pitcher, he did not go all the way. San Francisco shut out St. Louis 11-0. Winning pitcher was Robinson, the loser LaPointe. Robinson did not go all the way. Montreal defeated Atlanta 7-2. Palmer the winner, Falcone the loser. And at the end of two, Chicago won, San Diego nothing. Trout against Whitson. In the American League, Minnesota beat Baltimore, beat Baltimore 13-4. A no-hitter for Jack Morris, Detroit winning 4-0. Yankees lost to Texas 8-5. Boston over Oakland 3-0. Cleveland and Kansas City rained out. Other games later on. Yubi Brooks, who's 0 for 3, leads off and lofts a fly ball to left field. Jose Cruz drifts in and makes the catch one away. Frank Dupino still on the mound for the Astros, the third Houston pitcher of the night, as the Mets lead it 3 to 2 here in the top of the ninth inning. And Junior Ortiz will be the batter. Ortiz in the ball game replacing Mike Fitzgerald who started and junior lines one hard into the seats behind the Houston dugout for strike one. I hope they were watching the game. Ortiz hitting 259. Dirt one and one. Mike Fitzgerald was one for two plus a walk. Pino working his third inning has given up just one hit. Fouled off one and two. That one hit a single by Keith Hernandez in the eighth inning. The Mets had runners at first and third with nobody out and failed to score as DePino struck out Foster, Strawberry, and got Wilson to pop up to first baseman Ray Knight. So the Mets still looking from, for some insurance to take into the bottom of the ninth here in Houston. Breaking ball grounded right back through the middle. Second baseman Bill Doran has it. Two away. And Jesse Orozco will bat for himself here with two out and nobody on in the ninth. Obviously, you want Jess on the hill in the bottom of the ninth. And the bottom of the ninth, they have the eighth, ninth, and first place hitters scheduled up. So we'll see a pinch hitter for the pitcher for sure. Ball one. Roscoe batted 333 last year, four for 12. He's a 176 lifetime hitter. You could have left that out. <laughs> 333, he would have liked. 
Well, he's improved a lot, you see. One and one. Two out, nobody on. And ball two. DePino has walked two. Struck out three. Fastball fouled off, and it's two and two. Jesse from Santa Barbara, California. The count is full now. I guess the best ball player from Santa Barbara was Eddie Matthews. He was a good one. Hall of Famer. One of my boyhood heroes, as a matter of fact. I hope he didn't hear that. <laughs> now, Ralph, I'm not that old. <laughs> Jesse's staying alive. The count's still three and two. For some reason, before the Giants and the Dodgers moved to the West Coast when I was a kid growing up in California. I adopted the Braves as my team. Followed their exploits. No, I knew they must have been winning at the time. <laughs> Jesse you didn't say a pretty good pitch. You didn't say a word about going to the University of Houston until they got in the Final Four. <laughs> now you know that's not true. I was hardly there long enough for it to count anyway. Still three and two with two out and nobody on. We're in the top of the ninth inning with the Mets holding a one run lead. And again, Orozco fouls and out of play. The fans applaud a nice catch by somebody in the loge seats. One thing about Jesse, he's prolonging the suspense of that bottom half of the night. He sure is. <laughs> and he takes ball four. DePino angrily stalking down off the mound, thought he had strike three. So Orozco works out a walk after fouling off a half a dozen pitches or so. And see, I was going to say, did you see that no hitter today on TV? Yes, I did. When uh, Luzinski took that 3 2 pitch, that looked like a solid strike, and they call it ball four. Jack Morris and Lance Parrish both jumped straight up in the air. They couldn't believe it. Derwood Merrill was a home plate umpire in that no hitter. And there were a couple other close calls, but with the help of great fielding by first baseman Dave Bergman, whom the Tigers require, acquired from San Francisco, Morris came out of it with a no hitter. Ron Gardenhire takes the ball. Gardenhire, one for four, single to center back in the fifth inning. You know, it figures he'd pitch a no hitter. Anybody that would wrestle alligators has got to be tough. <laughs> or strange, or both. He did have a clue to it. He said if you tape their eyes, in other words, put tape over their eyes, they're a little more gentle. That makes sense. <laughs> they just certainly wouldn't know where to bite. I want to know how do, you, how do you get the tape in their eyes, though? You, you better first put some tape around their mouth. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes. And a ground ball to short. Vaughn will go to Doran at second base for the short one, and the inning is over. So the suspense is prolonged, but it is eminent as we will go to the bottom of the ninth inning with the Mets holding a 3 2 lead. Right after this word from Oldsmobile. Steve Zabriskie along with Ralph Kiner and Tim McCarver coming to you from the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. Second game of a three-game set. Tomorrow night we'll be on the air at 7 o'clock Eastern time for the final game of this series. And as we go to the bottom of the ninth, Jesse will be trying to save it for Dwight Gooden. And on tomorrow night's telecast, 
Mike Torres, the opening day loser in Cincinnati, will oppose Joe Negro, who lost the Houston opener for the Astros as they go at it here in the final game of this series. We'll be on the air at 7 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow right here on Channel 9. And lots of things happening tonight as Dwight Gooden sits in the dugout. I don't believe Ralphie has gone into the clubhouse as many starting pitchers would as he wants to hang on. There he is. Well, he's Still sitting, sitting on his first major league win. That's if right. Roscoe can preserve it. Dwight pitched very well pitching the first five he gave up a run on three hits struck out five and walked two and here is Alan Ashby will be followed by a pinch hitter it looks like it'll be Floyd Bannister who's out on deck and then the top of the order in Bill Doran Did I say Floyd <laughs> Alan Bannister Floyd Bannister a pitcher in the American League who worked today as a matter of fact who used to pitch here that's right Ashby takes a breaking ball for strike one and now a ball has gotten away from the Houston bullpen. No, it's a pennant that fell down from the stands, apparently retrieved by the ball boy down there. <laughs> One strike to count on Ashby. And again, the breaking ball from Orozco. They want the appeal to first base umpire Doug Harvey. He says no. The scoreboard says 0 and 2, but apparently it's 1 and 1. And a breaking ball away. Two balls and one strike. Ashby, a switch hitter. And the Mets playing him straight away. Fastball missed. Two and two. And a breaking ball, Hubie Brooks, and a good strong throw, one away. Well, we should have Tim McCarver up here because Tim is not a advocate of playing close to the line. And Hubie was guarding the line to guard against the extra base hit and had a tough play to get that man, that ball, which looked like it might go through for a single. One of the things that helped him is that Ashby does not run very well, and Hubie had time to right himself and make a good throw. Well, here's Alan Bannister. As you see, he hit 125 in the spring. He's appeared in one game, but has no at bats officially so far this year. Number one draft choice by the Philadelphia Phillies. And at one time held the record for the most hits by a college player in NCAA A1 rating. Was broken by Hubie Brooks while playing at Arizona State. They both played there. Speaking of Hubie, he's moved off the line now, and the breaking ball is missed. It's one and one. There's Brooks at third. Hernandez off the line also at first. Fastball, ground ball down the line, but foul. And the counter's one and two. One out, nobody on bottom of the ninth. As Alan Bannister pinch hits and Bill Doran, the leadoff batter, is on deck. Doran is one for four in the ball game. The Astros have five hits. The Mets eight. Fastball outside, check swing foul out of play, and the count still one and two. Bannister in the American League hit 271. Last year as a pinch hitter for Cleveland, he was five for ten. Not too shabby. Pretty strong. He had a grand slam home run as a pinch hitter for Cleveland last year, and it was off of Rick Waits. His only grand slam home run in his career. And a breaking ball from Orozco way outside, and it's two and two. 
first inning of work, Jesse threw predominantly breaking balls. This inning, he's let go with a couple of fastballs with pretty good velocity. And the breaking ball popped up foul out of play. High behind the Mets dugout. And the count holding a two and two. Fastball ripped to left. Foster right there. Only has to move a couple of steps. And there are two away. So one out remains. And Bill Doran is the last chance for the Astros. Make plans now to attend the Mets 19th annual welcome home dinner Wednesday night April 18th at the Sheraton Center Hotel in New York. Tickets are thirty two dollars each. For further information call the Mets at two one two five oh seven M E T S. As the Mets will come home the 17th to open a three game series against Montreal. Fastball is fouled out of play for strike one. Two out, nobody on, bottom of the ninth, the 3 2 Mets lead. Tim McCarver has made his way down to the field, and we'll hope to have an interview with Dwight Gooden after the ball game. There's a line drive sounded like a broken bat base hit into left field and a two out single by Doran his second hit of the night keeps the Astros hopes alive broken bat base hit and they all count and that keeps everything alive and we're going to have a pinch hitter let's look at it again he got in on the trademark but Duran managed to fight it off and looped it in the left field for the base hit Terry Poole is scheduled to hit a left hand batter with a time run at first but it's going to be Phil Garner. Well, they're going to the old pro, and Garner, who has been felled by that upper respiratory infection, in fact, spent time in the hospital and only returned to the Astros in uniform yesterday, will make his first appearance of 1984. As you see, he hit 260 in spring training. And this guy's a gamer. He'll give you everything he has, whether coming out of a sick bed or not. Garner last year hit 238 in an off year for him. Drove in 79 runs, hit 14 home runs, and probably got to be one of the smallest cleanup hitters as he batted fourth in the Astros lineup last year in some time. Doran at first representing the tying run here in the bottom of the ninth. Garner the winning run at the plate with two out. What did Yogi say? It's never over till it's over. Truer words were never spoken. Fastball fouled back, strike one. Garner coming to Houston from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Houston giving up Jim Ray. And the reason for that was Garner was not going to re sign with Pittsburgh. Throw to first. Doran did not have a big lead. Johnny, what did I say, Jim Ray? I'm thinking of Jim Ray Hart. Former San Francisco Giant. One strike to count on Garner. And a curveball and a beauty for strike two. So Jesse. In control here with the Astros down to their last strike. And a high fastball, one ball, two strikes. Threw that ball up there like he was trying to miss with it on purpose to set up the next pitch. That's the big advantage in being ahead in the count. Breaking ball and it's lined to left field but Foster has a beat on it and the Mets win three in a row a three to two 
heart-pounding victory as Dwight Gooden picks up his first Major League victory, the 19-year-old who's making the jump from Class A to the big leagues. Jesse Orozco picks up his first save of 1984, and Tim McCarver will have a word with Dwight Gooden, and Ralph and I will have a wrap-up from the Astrodome in Houston. The final score once again, the Mets 3 and the Astros 2. Well, the New York Mets have clinched a uh, win in this series here, a three-game series, winning the first two games of the three-game schedule. The Mets won a three-game series back in 1982, and this is the ninth that they have won against Houston in their career. Home run by Strawberry in the second over the center field fence gave them a 1-0 lead, and then a two-out double by Mookie Wilson drove in two more runs. A big play in the ball game. Steve had to be the play when a base hit the left field by Ray Knight with runners at second and third and the runner at second base Jose Cruz failed to slide at home and was thrown out by George Foster the left fielder so the mechanics of baseball a very big part of this game if he had slid then it would have been a tie ball game at three he might have been safe as right Ralph and you really can't blame Jose Cruz because Dickie Thorne who had scored ahead of him and the on deck batter were both standing there and said nothing to him about whether or not to slide uh, Foster made a fine play George's defense has been outstanding but I think the big thing in this ball game, and you're going to find out from Dwight Gooden in just a minute how big it was for him, has to be the fact that for a couple of years now, and particularly throughout this spring, we've been hearing about these good young arms that the Mets have. Well, going back to Wednesday night, when Ron Darling won the ball game, Walt Terrell winning here last night, and Dwight Gooden picking up his first major league victory tonight, we're beginning to see that those things that we've been hearing are really true. The Mets do have fine young pitchers, and the Mets are also playing outstanding defense, and that's the reason they've won three in a row. Well, Orozco picked up his first save of the year. He had 17 last year, and he saved it for Dwight Gooden. And let's go down to Tim McCarver for an interview with Dwight. All right, Ralph Kiner, thank you very much. Dwight Gooden, you got a lesson tonight in starting your first major league game, and you also got a lesson in rooting, right, because you stuck around those last four innings just just to make sure that that bullpen put the clamps on things. Right, I hung around to see what was going to happen. I felt great out there. Um, first battle had a little jitters, but after the first battle was over, then everything just seemed to fall in place. For, for those who have never started a big league game, what was your day like today? It was a day it's like it was going, everything was going slow, you know. I was <laughs> impatient, really trying to keep myself busy to the game time, and I was really pumped for the first one. And you were fired up, and you had amazingly good control. You only walked two, you struck out five, and they clocked you at 95 miles an hour. Was that about on time? Yeah, that was about right. Um, I knew I'd get up there this year. Last year, I talked about 93, 94, but this year, I just felt great. You know, I just went out and wanted to get my best, keep the um, ball club in the game best way as possible. And, and Dwight, the interesting thing about a young pitcher who can throw breaking balls behind the hitter, as you did, or behind the hitters, as you did so well tonight, a lot of curveballs you threw in a 1-0 count, a 2-1 count a couple of times. Uh, you really have confidence in your breaking ball, too, don't you? Yeah, my curveball, um, I've got a lot of confidence in it, and when I'm behind battles, I like to show up my curveball and, you know, let them know I can get over the strikes. And um, once I um, get command of my all-speed pitches, and then I have my fastball just that much better. And your mother and father being here tonight was uh, didn't hurt things, did they? No, that made things a lot better, you know, relax more, and just had to go out and do it. I have rarely met Ralph Kiner and Steve Zabriskie, a more composed young man, Dwight Gooden with his first major league win tonight. Now let's go back up to the booth to Ralph and Steve. And the first chapter in a book of Dwight Gooden, and it might be a long, long book. A book I'm sure he's going to like to read at the end of his career. Today's star of the game will receive compliments of Wayne Scott, young man shirts, sweaters, active wear, and sets and styles and colors. For all the men you are, Wayne Scott. Tonight's guest will also receive from Daniel Mink, a sports watch that's a stroke of genius and ready for any course of action. Daniel Mink's exciting watch collection is available at Bloomingdale's. The line score of the ball game, the Mets three runs, eight hits, no errors. The Astros two runs, six hits, and one error. Once again, the final score, the Mets three and the Astros two. The participating advertisers of New York Mets baseball have been Budweiser, the king of beers, and proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Manufacturers hand over trust. For our facts, make your money worth more. Datsun, Nissan builders of high-quality cars and trucks for over 50 years. Available at your Datsun dealer. By Exxon and its thousands of independent dealers. And by your tri-state Lincoln Mercury dealer. We're on a roll. 
until tomorrow night at 7 o'clock New York time when the Mets take on the Houston Astros in the final game of this three-game series. This is Ralph Kiner saying so long for Tim McCarver and Steve Sabrisky. The executive producer of Mets baseball is Ralph Robbins, directed by Bill Webb. The associate director was Tom Shaffery. Tonight's game was produced by the channel.